give God all the thanks and all the praise for his mercies towards us and I want to believe that you have had a very wonderful week so far uh, God has been good with with the week has been good few challenges but God has been good it's been it's been an awesome week for us and we are trusting him even for greater things for him to do so i want us to approach this whole thing with an appreciative heart to thank god the bible says that a joyful heart is good medicine but a broken spirit dries out the bone so we must always seek to look at the good things that god is doing in our lives and give him praise the hymn writer says when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings and name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So, Paul says, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors because he is focusing on the good things that God has done, not on the negative things the devil has been trying to do. And I will encourage you to do the same. God has been good to us and I want you to rejoice in his goodness. And so before we go on, I would, I would, I would uh, ask you to share if you haven't shared it, I can see you. Sister Sefa, God bless you. Sister Susan, God bless you. If I haven't seen you, it's not intentional. Uh, Alphonse, Mavis, God bless you all. Nene Trump, God bless you. I'm trusting God. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time this afternoon. So if you have not shared it, why don't you just click on the share button? You can also go and select your special friends and loved ones that you want to listen to this because it's going to be a blessing. Uh, comfort, God bless you. Ronnie, God bless you. Uh, invite your husband, invite your wife, invite your fiance, invite your fiance, invite your whoever, your uncle, your auntie, everybody, let them all come on board because it is going to be an awesome time today. We're trusting the Holy Spirit to help us and it's going to be good. So why don't we share a word of prayer and then we will go on straight. Father, we bless your name for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you because you are a good God. You have done us good. And Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we pray this afternoon, morning, evening, night, depending on where people are listening, that Lord, you will use us to bless them. Lord, through this broadcast, let your spirit enter into marriages. Let your spirit dismantle attacks that are waging against marriages. Let your spirit rebuild marriages that are programmed to fail. Let your spirit draw the hearts of husbands and wives back to each other. Let your spirit drive men and women to go and marry those women or men that they have left hanging. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be healing even. And Lord, let there be salvation for anyone who will listen to this who is not saved. Sweet Holy Spirit, we are depending on you to give us utterance and to bless your children, to build them up and not to pull them down. Have your way here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Minister Manuel, Sister Millicent, God bless you. God bless you all. Please share. Please share. Please invite friends. Please invite loved ones. Uh, sweetheart, how are you? I've been very well by God's uh, grace. I miss you. I haven't seen you all week. <laughs> God, this is where we meet. <laughs> I haven't seen you all week, so I hope you are well. I hope everything is yeah, going well. Yeah, by God's grace, I'm doing very, right. very well. And I want to say hello to all our viewers this afternoon. Mm. It's a joy to see you, and I trust God we're going to have a beautiful time in His mm. presence. Mm. Thank you once again for coming. Amen. 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 We bless God. We bless God. So you are well, and you are fine. By God's grace. Good, Thank good. How are well. you enjoying your marriage? Very well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We thank God. 
we thank God. Hey, my friend, how are you? <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot read your name because I, I cannot read the the uh, the language you've used to write your name. But hey, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Right, okay. So, um, what are we talking about today? We're we talking about how to love your spouse. Mm -hmm. Subsection, love focuses on the best. Love focuses on the best. On the best of oh, what? Sorry, okay. Reverend Alute is saying... Oh, man of God, man of God, Pastor man of God, Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel, God bless you, God bless you. Yeah, so love focuses on the best, the best The best what? in your spouse, mm -hmm. the best things in the marriage, mm -hmm. the best things about your relationship and your marriage and your spouse. Mm. Yeah, that is one good way of loving your spouse. What if I cannot see? Why can't you see? You saw before you married, obviously. <laughs> so, so whatever made you marry the person, obviously there was something good in the person before you got married to the person. Right. So if you can't see any good thing, go back and start seeing again. All right. Okay. All right. So what we, we're going to be discussing today, otherwise of every marriage, right? The beauty or the ugliness of every marriage is determined by... Two things. And these two things are hidden deep within our subconscious, right? Our subconsciousness, right? And these two things, we can call them two chambers or two rooms, right? Okay, uh, my friend, he said that his name is Abdul Gadir. Okay, God bless you, Abdul Gadir. <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, inside this inner chamber or inside this inner place, there are two rooms or two chambers. And one is called the chamber of encouragement or the chamber of appreciation or chamber of positivity. And the other room is called the room or the chamber of discouragement, the chamber of depreciation or the chamber of uh, negativity. Okay. Everybody has that. It's, it's natural. We are programmed with it. Just as you have left and right, front and back. Okay? Everybody has that. We all reason in that way. It is the combination of these two things that help us to make our judgments over things. For example, if you want to invest in a business, you will look at the, the, the positives of the business. Whether you can easily make profit, whether the thing will sell. And then you also possibly look at the negativity. Actually, in business... We call it, is it a SWAT? SWAT analysis. Or is it SWAT? SWAT analysis. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis, yeah. right? So you, you look at that. In the same way, it works in marriages as well. When you are in there, you will be looking at the strengths and the opportunities that you can see in your spouse or in the marriage. At the same time, you can look at the weaknesses and the threats that are in the marriage. So we can you can also return this thing as the SWOT analysis of your marriage. But love rather focuses on the on the S and the O. The, the, so the SO, okay? Instead of the WT, right? So inside these two chambers... Whatever you focus on, if you focus more on the negative chamber, it creates a mindset, a worldview. And this mindset or worldview now determines how you react towards your husband or your wife. And this reaction now determines how they may also end up responding to you. And so eventually creates the image or the picture that the marriage is supposed to have. Um, the Bible says in uh, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that keep your heart with all diligence because out of that, keep your heart, that inner place, be very careful which area you focus on because out of that will come the image of your life, the issues of your life, the decisions you will make, the words you will say, the attitude you will put up, whether you have a smiley face or a frowny face, whether you will you will be enthusiastic in, in relating to your spouse or otherwise. All these things come from how you control those two rooms, the positive room and the negative room. The positive room and the negative room. So today we're going to be looking at these rooms and the effect they have and then also to come to a conclusion that if you really want to walk in love, you will have to focus on the positive room. And the 
interestingly, Professor Selig, we are designed in such a way that we do not naturally find the good things. Yeah. You have to decide to look for them. You have to decide to look for them. Whereas the negative things, you don't even have to look. You can easily find what is wrong. You can easily find what is wrong. But to find what is good in a marriage, you have to make the effort to look for it. So we're going to trust God to help us to go through this. I want to believe that it is going to be a blessed time for us all. All right. So, Pastor Sally, uh, the room of encouragement. The encouragement room or the room of encouragement. What is it? Right. So, um, just like Pastor Derek said, there are two rooms mm -hmm. in, in our innermost hearts, in our in, deep, deep inside of us, mm -hmm. that um, works for or against our marriage, mm -hmm. depending on which one you encourage. So the first one is the encouragement room, and the second one is the discouragement room. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the encouragement room. The encouragement mm -hmm. room mm -hmm. is where all the good memories you have about your spouse are stored. Good memories, which means that you record... All the beautiful things about your spouse. Because our brains are like a video recorder. Yeah. The things we see, the things we experience, the things we hear, everything. Our brains naturally record them. Yeah. And it stores the negative things into one, one compartment and the positive things to one. one. Okay. Yeah, so the, so, so the encouragement room is where mm -hmm. all the good memories mm -hmm. are stored about your spouse. Mm -hmm. the, the memories of kindness done, the good qualities, the wonderful time shared together. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Please take your time. The memories of kindness. Yes. Give me examples. Okay. The what are some of, of the kind things we do you know, to each, each other, other that our brains are likely to record and store? Okay. You know, when we started, we talked about love is kind. Mm -hmm. And we, we dealt a lot more with the things that kindness mean in marriage. Yeah. So all the, the kind things we do for each other. You are sick. Your, your spouse steps in. And maybe cook takes, some light cook soup, some for light you. soup for you. Takes very good care of you, mm. or, or maybe your spouse treats you in a particular way mm. on your birthday anniversaries. All the wonderful things your spouse does for you. You leave it's your lesson. shoe. You leave your shoe in the hallway. Your she spouse picks takes it, it for up you and, and and takes it somewhere. Let's your say spouse you are, offers to iron your dresses exactly. for you. You are tired. You are not able to iron your dress, or you are not able to make yourself a cup of tea or something. Your spouse steps in and does it for you. You want to go somewhere. You don't want to be alone. Your spouse offers to go with you for companionship, for fellowship. All the kindness that we show to each other. Mm. You you eat. You are tired. You cannot be bothered to wash your plates. Your spouse does that for you. You are still tea in bed. Holidays. Your spouse thinks, look, you've had a very tiring let's say, period of time, I'm taking you on holiday. To pay go and the, rest a yeah, little. Yeah, pays the ticket for you, treats you very nicely. And all the wonderful things. Is it, is it that you are trying to ask for something yes, in because, this thing? Yes, or, yes. <laughs> or you are actually trying to no, just no, be a blessing? I'm trying to ask. Oh, good afternoon, <laughs> Sister Ada Zion. God bless oh, you. Oh, hello, hello, Sister Ada. <laughs> so, it's not like you are asking for a holiday or anything like that, but you are just... Hey, it's all part of it. It's all you part are of just, the, okay. It's all part of the asking and, you know, all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so all the beautiful things your spouse do for you, the mm -hmm. good things, mm -hmm. are stored in the encouragement room. Okay. Memories of time shared together. Mm -hmm. First kiss. Mm -hmm. First. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. What? what now, I mean, those <laughs> memories that you shouldn't forget them all. Uh, do you remember your first kiss? My first kiss. With who? I remember that my <laughs> attempted. <laughs> my. <laughs> my. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me today, I'll be coughing a little. My my attempted first kiss, I was rejected. <laughs> my attempted first kiss, let me let me confess. You, you know, I haven't met a Pharisee as this Christian sister. She wouldn't agree to anything. Hey, this woman, if you don't marry me, you ain't. Oh, I mean, I just felt so much love for this sister. And I just wanted to, oh, let me just hug you and, no, 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 no. She just, I remember, the way I felt embarrassed. I felt so embarrassed. Oh. I felt like, oh, I, I mean, today we are I've been rejected. No, it's love you. Love focuses on the best. Yeah, but it's you <laughs> who mentioned the first kiss. And then I, re I, I remember that for me, my first kiss is in the negative side. No, because no. <laughs> when I tried my first kiss, I was rejected because I wasn't married. <laughs> 
sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So first kiss. <laughs> first what again? <laughs> first baby. First. First. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. First, baby, first, first baby. First baby. Yeah. So far. When you, I mean, oh, first pregnancy. First yeah. Pregnancy yeah. The when excitement. You, the excitement, and then you see that oh, you pregnant. You're going to become a father. A father when you mother. get the news, it's first broken to you. Oh, you are going to become a father. The feeling it gives you. Or even you, the mother yourself, knowing that you are pregnant, that your husband has made you pregnant. The, 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 is, does it bring any excitement to you as a woman when you uh, when you know that your husband has made you pregnant? Do you feel anything oh, yes. exciting about yes, it? Yes, you do. Does it make you love the man? Like, do you see him as, wow, this guy is special. He actually made me pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> are you sure? Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Please, man, go and make your wife pregnant. I hear it makes them happy. Eh? Uh, <coughs> first, I Sorry, I'm it. fine. I'm fine. Just forgive me. Okay. Yeah, so first pregnancy, arrival of the baby. Even decorating the baby room, like expecting and doing it together, choosing the, the painting colors. First house bought together. Yeah, first yeah the car excitement. Bought, first yeah. car bought together. I mean, all the beautiful things that you do together, mm. when you remember them, they are all stored in the encouragement room. Mm. That when every time you go into that place and you remember those experiences, they renew your love for your spouse. For your spouse. Yeah. They re yeah. Re re reignite the passion yeah. that yeah. you have. In fact, if it, I don't know how many people got a promise ring, but I did. So oh, I mean, you did? Yes, I did. I have spent on you. Have you? You have to pay me back. Oh. So if it's a promise <laughs> ring, I mean, wearing it and knowing somebody has promised you marriage, the person is going to actually marry you and live with you. Even mm. introduction to parents. The first yeah. time you, you're telling your parents, look, I've met somebody, I'm interested in the person, we are getting married. And all. all those things are excitement. Yeah. The first time you introduce your spouse to be to your parents. Or maybe the first time you went to church together. The first time you yeah, saw your I remember. pastor. Yeah, the first time you traveled together. together yeah. The first time you, you went Our for lunch. Our first trip was to Cote d'Ivoire, me and you. Was it? Cote d'Ivoire. I remember. And then the first time you had dinner or lunch, you went out on the first date. Yeah. I don't, when was our first date? I don't remember. Hungry uh, me, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. all those lovely things. You see, you remember mm. them and they are all stored in the encouragement room. Mm -hmm. And anytime you remember those things, you have some love for your spouse. You mm -hmm. have some great feeling for your Isn't spouse. Isn't it amazing that after we marry, we don't actually think about these things? No. Because as you're talking... You're really taking me down memory lane. I'm beginning uh -huh. to I'm beginning to remember some things and I'm beginning to feel <laughs> Anyway, carry on. Carry on. Yeah, these are some of the things. As we go along, I'm sure that we, we will be talking about more. Oh, I think we are having um comments and we are not even reading them. Mm. All these still exist, still on this side. Yes, yeah, they're yes, still. They do, they they're do. still. They still do. Uh, Sandra is saying, promise ring is good. It's very good. I had one. I just don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> of course, once you get a proper ring, you can put a promise ring away. Yeah, okay, yeah. so all these wonderful memories, mm -hmm. you, you always have to make the effort to go back to revisit them every now and then. Revisit yeah. them, revisit them, revisit them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I hope you are sharing. I hope you are inviting your friends because it's only going to get nicer. It's only going to get better. So you want your marriage to get beautiful. Go down, go back to memory lane. Start remembering all the exciting things. The day he told you he would like to marry you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The proposal. Did he go on one knee? Did you? Bend that knee or me? I don't even know. <laughs> Did you? you I don't know what down I, flat. <laughs> I proposed to you or you proposed to me. <laughs> all right so yes all these things the first proposal yeah. or maybe the, response. the first day you met the, the first day you you saw each other yes the first day you saw me yeah how did you see me what did you think what happened how do you remember these things what happened the first day you saw me I think we were at school. Yeah. Sit for It's not like you think it is. Yeah, we, yeah, were, we at were at school. school yeah. And I saw you. And I saw this this young guy with... Obviously, I mean, you were not expecting an old man. No, with, with very slim, proper, gentle, like very posh with his curly hair. And I was like, 
Who is this guy thinking he's so full of himself? Look at the way he's I wasn't full of myself. <laughs> you were so It annoying. was you. It's it's you. You say like e, I like this guy. No. E, if I get this guy. <laughs> <coughs> 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 No, no, let, 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 so you women, the way we men, when we see women, sometimes yeah. like, wow, I would like to have this lady. Do you also get that same feeling for men that if you see this guy, say, wow, I would like, like if you are not married and you meet, you see a guy, do you get that same feeling that we get for women? Yes, it depends. It depends. Some people, you may get it initially or it will take a while because when I saw it, I didn't go like, oh, wow, look at this man. No. What but, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but later on, when you started disturbing me with love, love, love. Me, I started disturbing <laughs> you with love. No, let's 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 set the record straight. Look, when when we met in this from it, this woman came to ask me for my name like ten times. See, because I kept forgetting your name. So who was pestering who? Every two minutes, I'll be sitting in my corner, then she will come. What is your name? Then I'll tell her my name. What you saying? I'll say, my name is Derek Agri Solomon. No, how are you saying that? I said Derek Agri Solomon. No, Derek Agri Solomon. <laughs> then, then she will go back. Then she'll come back. What did you say your name is again? Then I'll say, Derek Agri Solomon. Then she'll come. Like 10 times, this woman kept coming to ask for my name. <coughs> now you are sitting here telling the whole world that I was the one pestering you. I think so. You see? Okay. <laughs> Let's carry on. So right. all, yeah. So memories, yeah. Yeah, memories. All these lovely, lovely memories. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, na 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 Ajewa Kodi. It's good to see you, Juliana. In fact, everybody is good, it's to, good see to see all you all. all of you. Just make sure you've shared it. Make sure you shared it. Make sure you invited friends. Okay, let's let's make it a wonderful afternoon together. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So oh, when you remember all the lovely, lovely memories, mm -hmm. you store them in the encouragement room. Yeah. And then once a while, in fact, I don't want to, I don't want to talk more about certain, but on, on the wedding night, the mm -hmm. first time you, you know, <laughs> ah, you, you remember all those things mm -hmm. and mm, all those things, when you remember them, you store them in the encouragement room. Wow. Yeah, so every now and then we've got to go back and remember yeah. the Yeah, actually I, I I mean I know that every now and then when I, I talk to you about the first I I I I, I mean okay let's let's go on. Let's go on, okay, let's go on. So that we can fulfill all righteousness. Uh, yeah. Okay. All righteousness. All right, so apart from memories, what are the other things we store in the in the Positive room. What are the things we store in the like encouragement good, good, room? Good, good qualities. The good qualities you see in your spouse. Yeah, good qualities that attracted you to your spouse. Mm -hmm. Good qualities. So, what are some of the good qualities that attracted you to me? Hard working. You are very hard working. I mean, okay. when you decide to do, and you are, you are one. And please don't just focus on us. As she is saying this, and you two look at the good qualities that attracted you to your your spouse, your husband, or your wife. Okay, let's let's we want to revive our marriages. Okay, all right. So think about the good things you saw in every human being. Maybe I should ask. Every human being has some good side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every human being has good qualities. Okay, all right. Carry on. So you are very very hard working. I mean, when you and you never give up. When I also see myself as very lazy. No, you are not. When you when you decide to do something, mm. you go all out for it. You are very mm. passionate mm. about things you do. Mm. I mean, everything you do, you are very passionate about it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> very passionate about every, preaching, studying your Bible. Look at the way you study your Bible. Mm. On your knees with nobody around. I mean, serious. You are serious about everything. So very hardworking, very passionate, and and very caring. Mm -hmm. You have a very caring heart. Mm -hmm. You you are very. You think for people. You feel for people. You care about people, mm -hmm. and you are also very selfless. Mm -hmm. You want to go all out for somebody. You want to sacrifice for your sacrifice to make others happy and others comfortable and things. Do we have a lot of comments? No, you talk. And things like so. These are some, you are prayerful. Mm. You love God. You you really love God. That's a good quality. Okay. You love God. So you saw I loved God right from the beginning. It's one of the things that attracted you to me. And you was, you could sing nicely, beautifully. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I I also when I met you, I saw. Uh, maybe one or two qualities. Sister Ronnie, he is, he is, he's loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Not two ways about that. Did you say you saw one or two? Yeah, qualities? maybe one or two qualities <laughs> that <laughs> that you were 
of course you you also love god but i mean honestly mm. one thing that really attracted me to you yeah. was your love for god mm. your passion for god your ability to humble yourself and listen yeah so automatically you became like my younger sister you could follow me I, if i tell you let's do this you would say okay no arguments no 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 long 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 things mm -hmm. you would sit down okay let's study the bible you would let's go and pray you would do it mm -hmm. uh let's go and eat you would uh, and then also i saw you as very very neat Really? Yeah, the way you would dress and come to. I mean, we were in sixth form. Yeah, my the, father the, used to iron my shirt. Oh, <laughs> so your father deceived me. <laughs> <coughs> your father deceived me. Because your dress was always nicely ironed. And so sharp every day. So sharp with your sharp hair, <coughs> haircut and your research fellow glasses. I mean, you, you really looked sharp. And then also your academic prowess you were very very smart very very sharp and like a little girl who was almost in charge of the class yes winning everything chop 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 everywhere and then your kindness and that is one thing that you have still held on to up until now that i think of and it melts my heart every time i remember <laughs> Your kindness. I, 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 I saw a very <coughs> kind person and that kindness went even beyond you. I saw it in your mother. I saw it in your father. The way they all or they both treated me mm. in various situations I found myself in when even my parents were not around and how your mother, for example, would step in and come and help me. I, I mean, I was a stranger at that time. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes the way you would bring me things from home, whether you you bought it yourself or you stole it or I don't Super. know, <laughs> but the way you would bring me sometimes nice home cho and it's like I, I mean, it, I saw kindness in you, and that kindness has continued up till now. That you've been married for almost seventeen years now, and you have still been very very kind to me. You are always kind to me. When I am not well, the way you take care of me, when I need anything, the way you would step in, you never murmur, never complain if you have to do anything for me. And mm -hmm. and these are some of the things that touched my heart and made me decide, no, I think this woman would be an all out for me. So these are some of the qualities. There, there is more. Yeah. There is more, but these are okay. So okay. Thank you. It, so, it, it, it feels nice to be told all these beautiful things, mm. and then also the good. Let's say that. The, and there the, were other I, things, but I, I can't say those ones now. There are other things that I will see them about you. <laughs> and I go, wow, this girl. <laughs> there and, were there were some beautiful things I was seeing about you, mm. and they they were attracting me to you. Okay, can I? I, I just want to read yeah. a few comments from our hearers. Mama Juliana, hello, Mama oh, hello, Juliana. Um, Sister Ronnie saying humility is you, Pastor Sel. Julia, Mama, um, Mama Juliana, you are not late. Thank you, um, Sister Ronnie. Mami in, Shira, in Shiraba is saying the great things you have achieved together. Exactly. How I you think... have urged each other on, how you have helped each other through your weaknesses, etc. Oh, okay, all... okay. That's yeah. in, the, in the third thing we're going yeah. to talk about. So, yeah. so, yeah, that's true. They are stored in there. And... Um, bless beyond belief is saying all these qualities for one person, Mama. Please help us to stop this annoying, you know. And then Adazan, oh, Adazan is thanking somebody, that's good. Audrey is saying, Wow, Mama, you are blessed. I try, you, I try. And I was going to talk about the good qualities too, could be physical things you, you saw in your in yeah. your spouse to be, yeah, maybe because one thing I saw in you, one physical quality. <clears throat> Your modesty in dressing, your mm. sense of modesty, mm. because I I am one who is I, I get scared by excessive dressing. Yeah. When I see a woman excessively dressed, like too much makeup, too long uh, uh, yeah. fingernails, Acrylic. and all these wild wild things, I get scared. Mm. I can't get close. Mm. But I realize that you were very very modest. Even this kind of hair, I have to force you to put it on. Otherwise, you wouldn't <laughs> do. So, that modesty also sort of uh, attracted me mm. to you. Okay. So, I was talking about good 
physical qualities about your spouse. Uh -huh, okay. Physical qualities, mm -hmm. maybe nice legs. Yeah, yeah. It, it goes yeah, down. That, that is what I was talking about. Some of those things I saw about you. Yes. Nice. Nice, nice ears. Yeah. Nice head. It could be anything. Nice lips. Nice lips. Because your lips was one thing that. Oh. But... <laughs> yeah. Nice lips. Nice lips. So all the physical things you see. And they about... say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, somebody may see something else. Somebody else yeah. may see another thing. Yeah. yeah. So these are all the things, all the beautiful things you see about. Some people have nice hair. Nice hair. Yeah. Your hair was. You know, your you had this curly, shiny hair. You take your bath and really, I don't know what you were putting in your hair, really brush nothing, it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Brush yes. it. And then as you're coming, you. it's all curled, curled, curled. <laughs> Very nice. And you couldn't sleep. Eh? <laughs> I tried. So all the nice things, nice voice, whatever it is, mm. whatever it is, something beautiful about your spouse that you, that is in your memory. Yeah, you, you store keep that in it, the positive that, place. Yes, you store that in the encouragement room. So these are some of the things you keep in there. And the memories of great times shared together that's what yeah, that uh, is what mommy is sure yeah, saying some some of the challenges that you have uh, met together and fought together and overcome together yeah some of great achievements like you said the first time you bought your your, your first house yes it's a great yes. achievement yes. when you finish university oh yeah yes uh when you 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 launched on business or something some of these great great stuff that you achieved together uh your your some great holidays you've you've been to and, and you know also it could also be um answer to prayer yeah answer yeah. to prayer great i mean beddings mm -hmm. and 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 worries and issues Things that you thought was going to exactly. lead to some and you disaster have, and, you, and you prayed on it you prayed, together fasted yes. and, then and you god trusted god and god you. came through for you it's, it's beautiful they are all stored in the encouragement yeah. yeah yeah so it's not just physical the spiritual things as well when you felt that you were going to fail and your wife or your husband stood with you yeah encouraged you yeah fought for you prayed for you sent you messages i'm praying for you fight on uh, maybe you were going for an interview yeah. Your husband or your yeah. wife drove you there, waited outside in the car, praying for you until you finished. Maybe by the time you came back, she had gone to find some sandwich or something for you. All these things, when you store them, you see, we, we've got to try not to be quick to forget the good things that our spouses do for us. We've got to try. You see, human beings... It's very, very easy for us to forget the good things people so, do for us. I wouldn't say it's easy. I would say it is normal to forget about... It's sort of part of us to forget about it. So somebody can do some great, great things for you. And, and you then remember. within a period, they do one or two bad things. And all of a sudden, they are completely... Yeah. Uh, the good ones are thrown away. And yeah. all we are thinking of is, is that, how evil yeah. they have been to us. Okay. So uh, these these things uh... and maybe we also have to say that it is the the frequent thinking of this encouragement room that mm -hmm. drove you to marry your spouse. Mm -hmm. All these things put together, mm -hmm. all the nice things you think about them, all the nice things you see about them, all the mm -hmm. nice things they do to you, all of them put together are uh, some of the things that drove you mm. to marry them in the mm. first. Andre West is saying, my husband has a humble about himself very sweet spirit oh awesome. that's nice awesome maybe we, we can we, <laughs> so please you know. everybody be talking about the good things about your husband the okay. good things about your your wife right um, we, we, have Ronnie, become so, we have become so used to talking negative 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 today let's go a bit more positive write some of the good things about your husband the good things about your spouse just let's go i can read um, Sister Ronnie saying the husband's flat to me oh ronnie <laughs> i mean are you trying to <laughs> oh, heaven sent. Good to see you. Um, Sister Blessing, good to see you all. Sister Thoko, it's good to see you. Mrs. Sefua Yeboa, good to see you. And everybody. Right, there's a, please, do you call it love if your spouse of him gets angry and will not talk to you for more than a week? Is it normal? Hmm. Uh, it's normal for some people, but it's not love. It's not naturally normal for that to happen. You see, it, it it all depends on the level of maturity. A man or a person has to be matured enough to be able to control their emotions. We all get angry. But as to how long we are going to allow the anger to control us depends on our level of maturity. So the person may love you. Actually, sometimes the one who loves you most is the one who, when you hurt them, <coughs> they feel so hurt that they don't want to let go. But then 
it has to be counted by their level of maturity. When you are really matured, when you are hurt, it hurts you most, but then you are also able to work on it quickly to let it go so that you can go back to love the person you claim to love. So it's it's a problem of maturity. It's a question of maturity. Okay. Okay, Pastor. I've got, Inshiraba is saying that my hubby took me to University in Legon all the way from Sunyani oh. and made sure I unpacked and settled in. He stayed in Accra for about a week before going back home. I have never forgotten awesome. about it. Awesome. You know, that, awesome. that, that, that made me remember once it was raining. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way from Accra Academy to Newtown where I yeah. used to live. And you took me all the way in the rain mm. to the house. And then you walked back home. <laughs> I mean, you walked all the way from Newtown to... Do you, do you remember Did I that? walk? Well, well, yeah, yeah, I think you walked to circle or something like that. Then yeah, you, because I think it was, it was heavy rain, was rain and I, traffic. When I remember transport thing, wasn't working and all that. I yeah. always remember it and I'm grateful. So all the lovely things, things like that, I really remember that. Mm, I do. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think this has... That is good. That is good. That is good. Oh, sorry. Now, Ode is saying that we need not forget the very little things that kept us together. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. So, uh, yes, like you said, it is these positive things that actually drive us to decide to marry the person. Nobody wants to marry a person that, you know, this person will hurt me. No. This person will beat me. No. This person will, will frustrate my life. Everybody is because of the thought of all the positive things you are seeing yeah and interestingly these things are created at the beginning of, of the, the relationship. relationship that is what leads to the marriage yeah. yeah so at the beginning we are seeing oh i've met this guy he's so kind oh he took me to a restaurant he he, he bought fast food for me oh I, he bought me roses he's so nice he's so kind and then this now say oh i would love to marry such a person and i think that we usually have this kind of expectation that for the entire marriage, it will all be every day. He'll be buying me roses. He'll be taking me to restaurants. He'll be smiling all the days of our lives. Okay. So when we get into the marriage and then things begin to change, we realize that, okay, uh, actually there is life. And that life is more than buying roses. Love is more uh, um, love is more than taking you to restaurants. Mm -hmm. Then we quickly forget about the days of the roses yeah. and the restaurant, yeah. and we only start focusing on the negatives when he got angry and shouted because he was running with, late for work yeah. and all those things. And then we begin to quickly build up a new room, mm -hmm. a new chamber of discouragement, pain, shame, and frustrations. But the Bible says in Luke 6, 45, yeah. it says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. Okay? So you don't have to allow the negative situations to decide how you behave. Mm -hmm. If you are good, the, no matter what is happening around you, you must remain good. Yeah. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good fruit, not out of the negative situations happening around. So you've got to aim not to allow the difficulties, the challenges, the, the rottenness, the dryness that sometimes come into the marriage to now change the way you feel towards your husband or your wife. He says, an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth an evil fruit. So if you allow your attitude towards your husband or your wife to change because you think they have changed, it is not because they have changed, that is why you have changed. It is because you yourself have harbored evil in your heart. That is why you are responding to that negative change. Because if you are good, even when your husband or your wife seems to be acting in a negative way, you will stay, still, still stay pure. Gold is gold, whether you pass it through water or you pass it through fire. Let us not be quick to put the blame on our spouses. That I have become like this because of you. It's because you are bad. That is why I have also become bad. You see, but naturally, that is how we we behave. Yeah. I, I don't know if yeah, I've shared this story with you. I don't know if I've shared with our Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. A man who went to commit fornication, right? He went to fornic com commit fornication with somebody else's wife, and whilst he was on there, the wife's husband was coming 
So he had to run away. And in wanting to run away, the light was off. So he picked a pants to wear. And what he picked to wear was actually the woman's pants that he picked to wear. And then he rushed home. And then when he got home uh, and he was changing, his wife saw that, hey, what are you wearing? And then all of a sudden, instead of admitting his guilt, that listen, I went to fornicate and I was caught. And this is what has brought about this. He rather said, oh, I bought it for you. But because of your bad behavior, I've started wearing it myself. <laughs> you, you, you see? So we, we are quick to put the blame on our husbands and our wives that, well, I'm being rude to you because you are not doing this. I am denying you sex because you are not doing this and that. I am, I am uh, I'm not going to give you attention. I'm not going to give you love. I'm not going to give you care because you are like this or you have done that. We've got to rise above that. If we are good, then irrespective of what we do to each other, we should still be able to maintain that goodness. And that is one thing. And I'm not saying this because you are here. That is one thing I have found in you throughout this period of our marriage that especially especially during those <laughs> times of let's say arguments and all those things i realized that no matter how angry we got no matter how uh, 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 angry i made you you would still if you had to cook you would still cook you would still make yourself available to me if i wanted you 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 never sort of denied me you never and one thing i have said and i always say you never used an abusive word at me, never insulted me, never said anything that is denigrating. You see, so that showed that that is a quality that you have in you that no matter how I annoy you, you will not say some things. You will not do something that is you. You see, and then maybe likewise me too, there also, have there also been anything <laughs> Have there also been any any good thing that you found in me that irrespective of the situation, you found that I I have been constant? Yeah. Really? Like lifting your hand against me. I, I can't I can't even I mean I, no matter how angry you are, you, you just you have self control. You no, you you may get angry, you may walk out, you may say whatever you want to say, but to lift your hand and hit me or something never i don't even, i i i don't even i haven't even thought that that is even a good quality because it is, it is a good quality i, I don't see why you should go and pick somebody's daughter mm -hmm. and bring her to your house to beat her i mean yeah it's not something i can ever imagine to lift my hand to hit you in anger mm -hmm. uh, and i pray that god gives me the grace never to ever think of that amen yeah yeah okay so and this, this, you see, this is you. You can never hit your wife and say that you made me do it. That it is because of, of your, your character, because of your bad behavior that made me. You should, you should never, I mean, something should never, ever cross your mind that you lift your hand to hit your wife or to strangle her or hold her. I mean, like physical, be physical with your wife. Never. never in your anger, never get close to her. It's my... My principle is when I'm angry, never get close just in case. <laughs> don't. Don't. Because that's somebody's precious daughter. You don't own her. You don't own her. And in the same way, like the, what I've also said, that no matter how angry I made her, she's never been able to raise her mouth to insult me. Never. 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 And so we've got to learn these things. If you are good, you, it will come out. So when your husband anoints you and you open your mouth, you are a fool, an idiot husband. It's not because your husband got you angry. It is your character. It is inside of you. It is inside of you. When your wife got you angry and you pushed her or you kicked her or you did anything, it is not because she got you angry. It is inside of you. That is who you are. And you've got to learn to deal with it. Let us stop putting the blame on each other. Uh, it's not my fault. It's because of you. That's why I've done this. It's because of you. That's why I've done that. Let us take responsibility and upgrade ourselves for our own good and for the good of, uh, of, of posterity. Okay? All right. So, so uh, we've got to always learn to insist on not dwelling on the negative room. Yeah. 
do everything we can to avoid the negative room. room. The discouragement the room. Discourage, the discouragement the, room. The negative, yeah. Because we will always, it's natural to think, my husband did this to me, my wife said this to me, and all those things. But then, there is grace to be able to help us to rise above that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's 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 go on to the negative room then. Right. Should I take it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, go ahead. Right, so as we have said, there are two rooms. The negative... The <laughs> Sorry, Joyce Kujo is saying ASU by... <laughs> I like that. <coughs> yeah, Ronnie is saying, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. Yeah? So let us stop blaming each other. Let us stop blaming each other. I refuse to give you self because of what you have done. No, it's because you are not kind. I insulted you because of what you did. It's because you, you are an insulting person. Uh, it says just as Adam and Shiram Mami is saying just as Adam and Eve blamed Adam blamed Eve and she blamed the snake yeah yeah we refuse to accept responsibility so we never improve when we refuse to accept responsibility we never Im improve Andre is saying my husband and I go to marriage counseling to be example for other couples to encourage them how to keep what's right in our very good very good very good very good, very good. Okay, okay, mommy. So let's let's go on. Let's go on with. Uh, so, so I hope we are sharing, please. If you are on and you haven't shared, please share. Please invite friends, invite loved ones. Let's get going. Yeah. Right. So the discouragement room mm. is, is is the exact opposite of the encouragement room. Yeah. So this is a place where all the bad memories are stored. Mm -hmm. so we keep the memories of things that bother and irritate you about your spouse. Mm -hmm. So let's say attitudes. Um, reactions, lifestyles, things mm -hmm. you don't like about your spouse, you keep mm -hmm. them there. Mm -hmm. Frustrations. Mm -hmm. Frustrated, mm -hmm. maybe. No, take your time. 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 So, uh, 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 things that bother you. Things that bother you. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, for example, that will bother a wife or a husband about their spouse? So, so let's say if you take, uh, let me talk from the woman's perspective. Okay. If you take. A woman, what mm. will bother her from the spouse is irresponsibility. A, an irresponsible an husband. An irresponsible husband. It bothers you people. Yes, it does. Okay. Because you are supposed to lead the family. What is an irresponsible husband? An irresponsible husband is a husband who is not leading the family in terms of everything. What so does he, he mean to lead the family? He okay. hasn't got a vision for the family. He's just there. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take initiative mm -hmm. to take the family to the next step. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't take major decisions in, in the family. He, he wakes up in the morning, he eats, he sleeps, he, when he gets some sex, he does it, and he goes back to bed. Mm -hmm. There's no vision mm -hmm. where you are but leading. But he goes to work. He go, but, but that's not vision. Going to work is not vision. Mm -hmm. Where do you want the family to be in the next two years? Mm -hmm. the ne what are the plans for the family? Where are you leading the family to? Mm -hmm. If you just go to work, and anybody can go to work. You don't have to be a husband to go to work and come every day. You, you are a husband because there's a family, there's a wife and children to lead. Mm. That's why you are a husband. Yeah. So if you are not leading me as a woman, I will be frustrated. Mm. I will keep that in my discouragement room. If you are not taking major decisions in the family, so what is happening? You don't know. Mm. What plans do you have for us? You don't know. Mm. Where are we going? You don't know. Mm. Do we need to make investment? Do we need to buy a house? You, you don't know. You are just there. Mm. It's definitely going to go into my... One thing I've also room. seen that, that frustrate uh, or, or bother irritate wives is husbands who are not spiritual. Yeah, not... I was going to come to okay, that. that. Okay, go That's on. the other thing. That, that's part of the leading the family. Mm -hmm. So apart from the physical things, you need to lead us spiritually. Mm -hmm. You are a husband. You are the priest of the house. Mm -hmm. You are not leading, leading us spiritually. Mm -hmm. We don't see you praying. Mm -hmm. We don't see you studying your Bible. We don't see you leading the Christian life. Mm -hmm. You are not teaching us how to be true Christians. Mm -hmm. We cannot depend on your prayers when things go wrong in, in, in the family. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing you interceding for us. Mm -hmm. So you are shaking your responsibility as a priest of the house. It's frustrating. That is going to go in my... And sometimes the husband will rather end up complaining about you that you are doing yes, too much yes. prayers. You are doing too much church. You don't let her sleep. I don't. You are up praying, praying. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you, 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 the woman, you can sense that there are things that the family must fight. And but your husband fighting. doesn't seem to take any responsibility no. about it. No. He's sleeping, eating, 
and then when you are fasting, he, he's complaining. When you are going to church, he's complaining. This man is not committed to church, not committed to financial like principles nothing. in church, no nothing. giving, no tithing, nothing. nothing. And, and if you are doing that, he's complaining. Yeah. So these things frustrate you. Yeah. Okay. What what else frustrates wives about men? Not taking part in training the children or in bringing up the children, mm. thinking that the children's training or bringing up is the job of the woman mm -hmm. or is the job of the wife. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. So you are just that you are not taking any step in bringing up the children mm -hmm. in the way of the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, carry on. But and Shira Mame is saying not appreciating anything the woman does, thinking he's the only one doing anything in the house. Yeah, we'll go, never we'll saying we'll thank that. you. We'll, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. We'll get we'll get to that as okay. well. Okay. So, so you say what you say. What the you children, yeah, taking care of the, you're not. I mean, some husbands do not even. They don't have a clue. Basic things like dates their children. Uh, school is reopening for their children. Mm -hmm. Some husbands don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Where their children is clothes their children will wear and all those things. Mm -hmm. What their children do, even the subjects their children are studying at school, they don't have a clue. Those things irritate us. They don't us. know the name of they their children's class. Their, yes, the name of their children's <laughs> teacher. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, na the name of their children's teacher. You don't know the name of your children's teacher. You don't know the name of your children's friends. Mm -hmm. You don't even know who your children play with. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know anything. Clubs. Nothing. Your children are, are you know, participating. You know, um, what's this film? Um... The, the, the warrior thing, what's it called? War room. The war room. One mm -hmm. of the things that hurt the child was when her father didn't even know what club she was in. Mm -hmm. I mean, little things like that affect children. And yeah. it makes me, it makes the wife feel that you are taking an interest mm -hmm. in the growth or development of your child. Mm -hmm. But some men don't have any clue. So, mm -hmm. from a woman's point of view, these are the things that will irritate me mm -hmm. as a wife when you don't have a clue what is going on. If why is saying, don't know what year the children are. That's <laughs> even worse. You don't even know your children's birthday you yeah some that. some fathers don't know their children's birthday no they are just there yeah i mean when you do things like that you really cause frustration and that is definitely going to go in my discouragement room it, it, it will be lying so it frustrates you. you it's like he's like hmm, hmm, this man yeah, hmm, this yeah man. exactly hmm. so he's saying they don't even know the class the children that the, the child is in they don't know whether the child oh, is God, in God two, help husbands. Year six, year four, they have no clue. God help husbands. God help us. God help us. <laughs> some of these things I'm, I fall foul myself. <laughs> Not too bad, but some of them. Because this, like my our children, yeah. this school they go to that the class is named after various fish. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> do you do you know the, the class names? Yeah. Yeah, you know, sort of fish, fish, fish thing. I, I always forget. Yeah, so, and then the sister that is also saying that another thing that frustrates us is a husband who is always thinking of the external family mm -hmm. and leaving us. Mm -hmm. So you are married, you have children, mm -hmm. and you're always thinking of your mother, your sisters, your uncle, and those things. Mm -hmm. You have more interest in the extended family yeah. than the nuclear family yeah, that so you it's are like, in. It's like you haven't left the, no. the family where you were a child No, no. everything For, is there. Th th therefore, you cannot become a man. You are still a child in the home you used to be, and, <laughs> and, and, and you've left your wife to become the man in this yeah. place. Yeah. Because the, the Bible says clearly that the man will leave his home and then come and... Ah, look at this one. So, blessed is saying, not only frustrates, that's where we wear jeans to bed. Uh -huh. And then, Deirdre is saying that, I know a man who sends his son to GP and doesn't know the son's date of birth. I mean, things like that. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. You, let alone <laughs> the woman's bed or anniversary. Uh -huh. And Samagava is saying, hmm. So, so this is frustrating when we don't this know is, your date of birth. Yes, you don't know like the anniversary, anniversary, birthdays celebrations and things like how could how could you not know and then also if you don't know your wife's size clothes mm, size, shoe size, size shoe size other sizes four, four. twelve <laughs> thirty eight what the what is thirty eight <laughs> <laughs> I know I know I'm passing I'm I'm an, I'm an I mean, I'm passing. <laughs> is it C O D or F okay I'll remember that one but uh, okay Right, so these things frustrate you. Ladies, if we've missed anything, please feel free. If the husbands are there to you too, you can bring... Oh, Joyce is saying something is wrong with her son. I think it could be from your end. It might be from your end, please. Uh, yes, okay. So, 
These things yeah. frustrate you as a wife. Yeah. And then they get piled up and they affect your they the can way, affect your demeanor. Yeah, yeah the way we relate to you, the way okay. we react. So you see that you ask a question, then we just flare up. Because we are expecting you to know these little Simple things. things. Do them and so that you, you also feel covered. Because it looks like when the man does these things, as a woman, you feel you feel comfortable. You yeah. feel Yeah. That so so another thing is that your man are, is in charge. Yeah, we are in the house, you're a husband. Things are breaking in the house. You are not fixing them. Mm. You're not expecting me to fix lights and bulbs and doors and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's your responsibility. Mm. And you are seeing the house is going down. Things are messing up in the house. And you are not doing anything about it. Mm. It's, it's, it's very frustrating. Mm. Or going back to what Ishraba said. You are not appreciative of the things we do. Mm. We are cooking. You come and work it. You don't even know how to say thank you. Mm. When you finish, you leave the place for us to wash as well. In the evening, you come that you want what? You don't know how to appreciate See. it. <laughs> You don't know how to appreciate anything we do in the house. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't care about it. You sort of think it is your right. Mm -hmm. Even if you think it is your right for us to cook for you, mm -hmm. to, to clean the house and to do all those things. Mm -hmm. A little thank you. Mm -hmm. It's all we are asking for. Some say your wife's phone number. Some people don't even know yeah, their wife's, their wife's phone, phone number. number. Yeah, they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we could do a little test for the men on, on the platform <coughs> and, and see if they know their, their wife's numbers. They <coughs> don't. <coughs> No, no, go back, go back. I think we've made some serious, serious comments. Serious, right. They said the men don't invite, blessed beyond belief said, most men don't even intend to buy anything for you, so they don't <laughs> care to know about your size. That is so sad. That is so, so sad. Uh, Ronnie is saying the fixing. Um, okay, just then you will fixing. say it and say it. This thing needs fixing. This thing needs fixing. And then you'll come back to say you are a nagging wife. Mm -hmm. Even though you know it has to be done. Yeah, like, like I said, so we had just said that some husbands don't know anything about their kids in school. And when you say, they say it's a woman's job. This is like Gifty is saying that it's frustrating. Akosha is saying, I know some men who will go to his family and tell what is going on in their marriage. I mean, yeah, that's another thing that really, really frustrates us. When we have issues in our marriage, it's mm. got nothing to do with your family, Pastor Derek. Yes, ma'am. It's... <laughs> 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 it's got nothing to do with your family. The marriage is us, mm -hmm. the two of us. Not your auntie, not your uncle, not your mother. And and oh, another one is when you allow your mother to be in the middle of the marriage. So your mother it frustrates is, you. Yes, your mother is standing there. Your mother is dictating what we should serve you when we cook. Your mother is saying whether it's nice son, or not. My son, my son, he doesn't like my this. My son so. doesn't like this. My he he is your son, yes, but he's also my husband. Yeah. My son is like that. Oh, you need all we dress. And your mother or your sister... <laughs> Somebody has put his wife's number on. <laughs> Bless you, Rudolph. Uh, okay. But I mean, all these things, when you when you allow your parents or your extended family to be in control, the... Your to sister, control, somebody, your big sister, Like we have, to, we have to make a decision. Instead of making a decision with me, you go and ask your sister, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. I, I want to travel. When are you... I, I mean, silly things like that. We really, really get... I'm talking from my woman's point. When we mm. finish, you can talk from my man's point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that frustrate us as, mm -hmm. as women. Mm -hmm. And we keep them in the discouragement room. Mm -hmm. And we store them waiting for you. The mm -hmm. day you bring yourself... We then all this you. Thing. That is why when we have misunderstanding, you people talk plenty. Because we have because a lot you of have things piled up all these things. Mm -hmm. So it comes... Ba -ba 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 like that. <laughs> Hey, God will help and us. And like somebody said, you don't buy anything for your wife. Even flowers. You don't buy flowers. What, little things. You don't buy any gifts for your wife. It's not nice. No chocolate. But we see you buying things for other people. That is yeah, even the worst that is, thing. That is... You don't take your wife out to dinner, but you take another colleague or friend or family out. You, you don't take your wife to the cinema, but you take somebody else out. You don't buy things for your wife, but you buy things for somebody else's, another woman somewhere. It's so frustrating. It will Maybe it's out of to... compassion. Your first compassion should be to your wife, Pastor. Mm. If you are not compassionate towards your wife, you shouldn't have compassion for any other woman. Mm. I mm. think. No, I think it's biblical. I think that is, that is, that is very, very... So these things bother wives. These things irritate wives about their husbands i don't know if there are any husbands out there and they also have anything that frustrates you uh, about your wife for me one thing that uh, has been my frustration has been that i don't know how to argue i don't know how to chat so when let's say there's a misunderstanding and i say 
one and then you say no 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 but this no 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 no, no, no. Then all of a sudden it's like I, I, sorry pastor I, can i just correct this okay like you say african men says they don't do flowers flowers is not for african men if your wife loves flowers buy it for her what has flowers got to do with african there, men? but there are flowers in africa aren't they yeah yeah so, so why so... would you say you are an african man so you don't do flowers <laughs> If your wife loves flowers, buy it for Whatever them. your wife loves. <laughs> no, Brother Rudolph say I'm intimidating. No, I'm not intimidating you, Brother Ru Rudolph. <laughs> I'm saying some of the things you do that we don't like. Yeah, you are not observant. Your wife is ill. You don't even know. Yeah, that, that can your be wife, very yes, painful. Your I've, wife is... I've witnessed it in some women and it, they, they really feel pain. Yeah, your wife is not comfortable. Your wife is not... Your wife, your wife is ill. You are not saying anything to her. You see another lady who is, oh, are you okay? No, is 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 the worst. I've done it before, <laughs> and I was made to regret it. Who made you? And regret I, it, somebody, an angel, <laughs> angel Gabriel, made me regret <laughs> that, and I've never done it again. Yeah. Uh, but I Rudolph said they have plenty things that irritate them. As Please, but I Rudolph, let them flow. <laughs> let them flow, because these women seem to be winning here. Right. So. Yeah. So you were talking about. Like yeah, and when, when because with want... many men that I have spoken to as well, it looks like their biggest problem is that they feel their wives complain too much, mm -hmm. murmur too much. Mm -hmm. But then, to balance it off, it's because these wives first mention these things mm -hmm. and the husbands will not respond. Because I think one thing that really frustrates wives is that men don't respond to their complaints. Yeah, This thing needs fixing. Okay, I'll do it. It, it can be for a year. It's still there. Mm. I have this problem. It's like men don't see the sense of agency in responding in to things. <laughs> in life in general. And so the woman has to say it over and over and over. And while she's doing that, then the man sees it as being complaining, being uh, uh, nagging and, and, and frustrating them as well. Mm. I think for many men, that is a problem. And then many men also believe that, let's say, their wives do not respect them. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously... Respect also, it's, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. If you are going to do these things that these women are talking about, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't easily expect that they will come and worship you. Yeah. Obviously, if you, you don't have a heart for your wife, you don't care, you are not responding to things, you are not doing things, she will naturally not come and worship you. So there's got to be a balance. Yeah. Somewhere. Sorry, I, I think that the flower thing is, is, <laughs> okay, is read. trendy. Let me read. just read. Okay. Um, Irama is saying we love flowers. Pa. Do you love flowers? You know I love. You remember the first flower you bought for me? I you, you know I still have that flower. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. It's at home okay. in my father's living room. I see. <laughs> um, Ifwa is saying I saw a white man who bought flowers and I asked the occasion. To my amazement, he was running late for a date with his wife. Even a date, he's got he's going with flowers. Wow. He was running date late. Late for oh sorry I can't. <coughs> I'm not getting. He was running late for mm. a date with his wife. What? So he bought flowers. African man would not even call to apologize. No sense of agency. Mm. And then um, there's a comment from Ben. He's saying, first of all, where did you find these boys you want to make them men? Not all guys are men yet. Look before you follow. If you are married to a boy, help them grow up. Okay. And <laughs> Rudolph is saying, text your girlfriend and she reply in two seconds. Send the wife a text and she will fly him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Send the wife a text and she It is true, Rudolph. That thing side. can be very not frustrating. Let's talk about missed calls. That can be very, <laughs> very frustrating. And then my wife will come and I'm so angry. <laughs> Where have you been? I've called and called. And it's like she's surprised why you are you are angry that <laughs> she she didn't see your call or she didn't respond. She was busy. I mean, busy. as far as she was concerned, she was yeah. That is painful. It's very that is very true. Woman, you do that to us. Do we? You don't see our calls as agent. You don't see our messages as agent that you must respond to. That one is very very true. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about the things that irritate. I mean. Yeah. So these are some of the things that irritate us <laughs> as the men. Okay. So, and 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 they sort of make you frustrated in the relationship. Yeah. Then other things that go into this negative room are hurt feelings. Oh yes, yes. Hurt feelings. Your your husband or your wife used a certain word on you, or and did it has, something, or did you. something, or did not do something you wanted them to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody mentioned way back about uh. Bless you, a, a man of God, Ebenezer. God bless you. Uh, mentioned something about uh, cheating. Yes. Yes. 
cheating is one thing that when it happens, it seems to become a major mm-hmm. signpost in the in the marriage mm-hmm. that even when the other party is able to forgive for you to carry on, it still looks like it is kept in the strong room. <laughs> It is kept in a strong room in the and it, af- it seems to affect everything. Yeah. Do we have any comments? Yes, yes. I'm trying to. Um, Blessed is saying, is telling Rudolph, we have serious responsibilities. Girlfriends don't have. That's why it takes. Yeah, love that is true. That's why it takes love for us to respond to your. And Ronnie is saying she is quick to respond to her husband's call, because he hardly calls. Yeah, because some men also hardly call their wives. Yeah. Or message their wives, okay. So immediately he calls, she responds. If he does and you don't pick up to Wahala, he said he hardly calls. If he calls and you don't pick up to you, are in uh, trouble. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. So so things like that, and then uh, uh like hurt feelings, cheating, insults, major disappointments. Yeah. Uh, unmet expectations. Unmet expectations. You know the hygiene, bad hygiene can also. Be very frustrating. It puts you, you off. And then, your... Yes, simple things have your bath. Yeah, like a wife who doesn't like bathing. Yeah, I told you nice. you're going to say I, I was going to say yes. Yeah, I have to come in first. <laughs> <laughs> a wife who doesn't like uh... because sometimes it's easy to think that it's men who don't like bathing, but there are some women too who don't like. I have mm-hmm. known some women who don't like bathing. I've seen some women who they will eat and they will put their plate under their under bed. The bed. Yeah, I mean, I've visited people and say, wow, I mean, this is crazy. Some women are also crazy. So it's not like always the men who are dirty. But some men also don't don't, don't like bathing. Yeah. And uh, especially when you marry some of these hygiene uh, 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 experts, yeah. then you are always going to have trouble. They will mm-hmm. always complain and complain and complain. Right, that's why he's saying living in one bedroom with three kids, don't want to rent big apartments, sending their money to girlfriends. I mean, this that, is serious. That's though. a very, very serious thing. That's a very, very serious one. Good afternoon, Sister Susie. God bless you. It's like if she says she loves her flowers, but it doesn't come, so she buys it for herself. That's Bobo. <laughs> God will bring them. God will bring them. Don't worry. We, we, as we go on. And but I'm not office. I say, what, what responsibilities do we have that we can respond to text messages? <laughs> like all they said initially, not taking good care of the children, leaving all the responsibilities of the home on the woman, it makes them tired. It makes them frustrated that sometimes they are not driven to. Uh, 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 they try saying husbands who don't like buffing. It's true. It's true. Many husbands don't like buffing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So hygiene. Hygiene. Yeah. Husband or wife who doesn't like brushing their teeth. Yeah. Who don't like changing their and underpants and yeah, things like that. I mean, how? Uh, some of these things look very raw, but it's happening in some homes. Yeah, it, it's, happening. it's happening in some homes, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Husbands. It's frustrating. Wise, uh, Nishra is saying when the women have had uh, our hair on for so long and we don't want to wash it, yes, yes, that is that is also <laughs> that is also uh, a, a, a no no, which goes into the negative side. Mm. So, uh, how about weaknesses? Yeah, your spouse's weaknesses and failures in mm. life. Mm. So, weaknesses, weaknesses, let's say character weaknesses, mm-hmm. character flaws. Mm-hmm. They talk too much, mm-hmm. they get angry. They, they are quick to insult mm-hmm. and all those things things that maybe you've spoken to them about you have tolerated it for a while mm-hmm. and it's still ongoing mm-hmm. it's very frustrating you keep that in in the discouragement room mm-hmm. as well so and you create an image that this man he is hot tempered yes anything oh, is going to flare, flare up, up and yeah. start breaking light bulbs yeah, and yeah. breaking I mean, because of that, some some couple they don't want to go out with their spouse because they know that they will be disgraced in public. They don't know how to talk when there are people around. They don't know how to react to situations when there are people around. Mm. And all those yes, they say anything. They just anything goes. All those weaknesses and failures we have. I mean, in the marriage. on our spouse mm. or our spouses have mm. also get into us and we keep them in the discouragement room. Mm-hmm. And if it happens constantly, you see that it keeps solidifying itself right mm-hmm. because if it's happening every time calcifying then, yes constantly constantly mm. so there are also things that we keep in the discouragement room mm. that we need to check mm. 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 amazing amazing um and failures yeah 
it depends. I mean, failures. What can there are some failures. Your that... husband was on a job. He misbehaved. They kicked him out. And okay, then... that's different to losing a job because of the, the company folding or something. No, but maybe because of his anger, anger he's gone or attitude. To... Yeah, he had an exam. You knew he could have passed, but he, he was, was not all careless about it, and, and then he, he fails, and then now it's 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 become a problem. Yeah, or maybe he's he he. He's, he was going to make an investment mm. and he spoke to him about it to be careful and he didn't mm. and he lost the money mm. that would affect the family all those mm. failures and things mm. somebody saying something there yeah bless beyond uh oh, okay uh daedra is saying husbands wearing their boxers for months oh ah, how could you do that <laughs> months <laughs> and then bad hy hygiene some of us use a, a weapon use as a weapon to uh to spite you not to come near yeah yeah so right. maybe when you see uh, uh a hygiene system that you think is not working maybe the best way is to work on it with mm, your yes. instead of saying oh you are like this so yeah i'm not i'm not coming near yeah. okay uh so bad habits bad habits drinking because yeah. some some husbands drink some wives drink mm -hmm. and it affects the marriage mm -hmm. in a negative way mm -hmm. some drink secretly mm. some drink openly mm. Uh, wasting money on unnecessary things yeah it's a bad habit yeah money that should be used for the family for the children's school fees or the the how the, the keeping of the home or something investments you, yeah investments you use it for flimsy things <laughs> if i say smelly perfume <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right okay okay and uh uh uh, uh, uh so wasting money on girlfriends yeah, yes. wasting money on on unnecessary things on clothes, sometimes some spouses expensive waste clothes expensive clothes that clothes. don't. You could buy it for a lot cheaper, mm -hmm. but you go for. It should be okay. Uh, right, okay. Somebody said yeah. to Lale, yeah, to Lale, <laughs> it smells so bad. All right, okay, yeah. So, so these things we've got to be very careful about them. We've got to be very, very, very careful about them. Uh, and then hateful words. Hateful, pastor. You know, hateful words really go. Yeah, they are not on your body physically, mm -hmm. but they go deep down into your soul. Mm. Hateful words, mm. insults, mm. abusive words. Mm. They are not good at all. They get into the discouragement room. Mm. And if you don't take care, it will take a very long time mm. for you to forget about it. Okay. 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 So we have to be careful about that. God, all these things are things that go into the negative room without us thinking. You see, somehow these things happen and they are being stored and we don't even know they are happening. Mm. No. We don't even know that it is creating a record. There's an automatic recording taking place there that would eventually come out. Uh, okay, so what are the consequences? What are the consequences that keeping these negative things bring? What are the consequences of, right. of, of I think one of the consequences is that it creates a negative picture about your spouse. Mm. So when you keep dwelling, I mean, no human being is perfect. We mm -hmm. all have all these negative things that our spouse keep in their discouragement room. Mm -hmm. But when you keep dwelling on it, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. When you keep focusing on it, when you are always thinking about the dis you always you always sit in the discouragement room mm -hmm. and make yourself comfortable in the discouragement mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. It creates a negative picture about your spouse. Mm -hmm. That your spouse is, like is saying emotional abuse is always deep. It, it, yes. it goes deep. Yes, okay. emotional abuse as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And it creates so when you stay in this room, it creates a negative picture about your spouse. Mm -hmm. You 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 have your own picture of what your spouse is. That he's selfish, probably silly, stupid, mm -hmm. foolish, they make wrong choices. I'm coming. Rudolph is saying that man of God, most women aren't romantic after giving birth. Oh, brother Rudolph, where from this one too? But it is true. <laughs> Let's address some of these things. Some women once they give birth, all their focus is on the baby, and and it's like they are no longer in that same kind of flow. Everything, the baby, the baby, the baby, and that what annoys me most is that they bring the baby to come and sleep in the bedroom. They bring the baby to lie on the matrimonial bed. If you're a woman here listening, and you bring your baby to lie on the bed in the bedroom, repent. That thing annoys husbands. You are still his wife, whether you've given birth or not. Okay? So remain romantic, remain passionate about your marriage. 
when you have had your baby. I hope we are sharing this thing. I hope we are inviting friends to watch. Okay, let us share. Let us let us beef up the numbers. Let us uh, uh, invite more friends and loved ones to come in. Okay, all right. So yeah, the effect of all these negative things, thinking about all these negative things, it creates a negative picture. And like I said last week, it helps you to create a bad image and say that give a dog a bad name, it's easy for you to kill it. Yeah. So once that negative image is created, then what, what happens? Every time you are thinking, hmm, my husband or my wife, she's this, he's that, he's that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, it, it makes you negative. Have you, have you thought of this? Is this is this real? Have you encountered anything like this in your in your marriage in your relationship? Mommy Juliana is saying that oh yeah, semo pastor. It is true that when you you encounter these things, when you go through these, uh, okay, yeah, that should be fine. The network should be better now. It should be better. I hope. Right, it's going to cost me more, but uh, we'll, we'll see how 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 we run it off. Okay, right. So so that's it. Uh, I mean, following on from that is that it helps yeah. you to gather your ammunition, mm -hmm. like you've said, mm -hmm. because you, 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 you create your tell of statement. Yeah. So it just prepares you to gather your ammunition and organize them for the mm -hmm. big fight. So you are there waiting. Okay, I'm waiting. The next time when he does this, second, I know what I'm I know, telling him. Yes, I know what to tell him. I know what to say. Because you keep dwelling in that negative room, mm -hmm. that discouragement room mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. So the more you you concentrate on those things. Okay, sorry. I think um, the video network. Can you can, yeah, can I, you please I think, let us know if the network is okay? I think okay. it should be better now. I think it should be better now. If it's better, please let us know. I think it's better now because it's showing here yeah. as better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Great. 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 All right. So if anybody went off, invite them to come back. If you haven't mm -hmm. shared, just click on the share. But um, let's invite more friends to come on board. Okay. All right. Yeah. So carry on. Yeah. So you, you get ready mm -hmm. because it's sort of you, you, you are staying in the negative room. You are remembering all the things. And sometimes you remember what you didn't say mm -hmm. that you should have said. Aha. <laughs> for, for, in, a, in a relationship where there is always a quarrel or an argument, yeah. this is one major thing. But, that yeah. Happens. You remember what you didn't say that. Oh, I should have said I should that. Have said that. When I should have said, said this. I should have reminded him of that when he said that. Mm -hmm. So it helps you to gather your meaning. The next time I'm waiting for him to say that and I'm going to give it to him again. Yeah. I'll make sure that this time i don't forget it and can you imagine if you are in a house with a husband or a wife mm -hmm. and you have already organized things that you are getting ready you are waiting for a time where you will fight and you will bring those things on board do you think that this kind of marriage has any beauty in the future no because you're already prepared for a fight. You have already organized yourself for a fight. Instead it means of for that love. you are expecting to you are fight. Expecting and you are fight waiting for it. You are waiting and you've already organized your missile. <laughs> Ready to shoot. It's like North and South Korea. Like you, you have positioned your missiles, waiting when to launch them and how to launch them. And that, that is a very dangerous way to, to, to live as a husband or as a wife. As a husband or as a wife. So we've got to be very very careful what else so when you when you keep dwelling in the discouragement room, mm -hmm. it also helps to expose your emotional injuries mm -hmm. to greater infections and then you deepen the wound you deepen the head mm -hmm. because you are always thinking about the negative things mm -hmm. you're always thinking about your husband's or your husband your wife's failures mm -hmm. they 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 their weaknesses mm -hmm. their frustrations mm -hmm. so you you expose that you already hurt yeah that is why you are in the discouragement room so, but, but when you stay there, the discouragement room has got nothing good to give you. That's no. why it is called a discouragement yeah. room. So you go there to be discouraged. No, it's got something to give you. Mm -hmm. It's got infections to give you. Mm -hmm. It's got things to make the wound deeper and more stronger. Yeah. So when you are hurt, you must rather go to the encouragement room. Yes. When your husband hates you, when your wife hates you, you must rather be quick to go to the encouragement room. Okay, he's done this, I'm hurt. But in actual fact, he's not too bad after all. He did this the other day. He's done this. And at least, that way, we are not saying that, ignore the fact that you've been hurt. No. But at least these things will help you to survive the injury. Yeah. 
but if you go into the negative room with the injury mm -hmm. what it does is that there are already a lot of injuries already there yeah and so the i mean the, the other injury of this that that and all these things will now begin to poison like you said begin to infect yeah the wound you've already had it, and it will it make it worse it, yeah. until eventually an it amputation amputation has to take place mm -hmm. You see, an amputation would have to take place, which is why we have to be very careful not to overdwell. Only I know that thing. Bless Beyond Measure is saying that he's saying that some words cut, so to see it takes special grace to forgive and forget. Yeah. It takes special grace, and we'll go into that. You see, it takes special grace. But then it is not wise that when your wife or your husband has done something that has hurt you, now you go into another place where you are not going to think over it over and over and over and now you connect it to all the other negative things she or he has done to you because it's not going to heal you it's yeah. only going to make matters worse. worse yeah and whether it leads to you going to fight him back or leads to you going to divorce him is still not going to make you no. end up better no. off no so it's like it's like Somebody is salting, you say, because of that, you are going to drink poison. Yeah. It, it's not going to change anything. It's only mm -hmm. going to hurt you extra, mm -hmm. which we have to be very, very, very careful about, that we don't dwell in the negative room. We all understand. Hello, Rita. God bless you. Mm -hmm. We all understand. We all agree that in marriage, no, we hurt each other. Yeah. We make each other cry. Mm -hmm. We have made each other cry before. Have we? At least to an extent. <laughs> yes. And I pray we don't go back into those those days or those years. And so, yes, it's normal. Your husband, if you are married and your wife has never made you cry before, your husband has never made you cry before, then you didn't go into real marriage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Real marriage, sometimes you will be hurt. Sometimes you'll be disappointed. Okay. But we must not dwell there. We must not dwell there. Don't forget that there is something you saw in that man. There's something you saw in that woman that made you decide to marry them. So if now you are going through a painful moment, don't get stuck in that place. Don't get stuck in that place because it will infect you. In Proverbs, Proverbs 17, 22, he says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit will dry your own bone. So don't dwell on the things that will break your spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't dwell on the things that will break your spirit. Some people know how to rehearse a negative matter. And surprisingly, we just sort of take comfort in dwelling on the negative yeah. things. Sometimes you are drawing the person like it out gives of us, the... It gives, us, it gives us reason to be morose, yes. reason to be sad. Yes. And sometimes you are drawing the person out of the discouragement room. And they don't, don't want to get, get me out. I want to stay here. I want here. to stay there. Focusing on the negative things, focusing on the head and your and focusing on all the bad things you think your spouse has done. It, it will destroy you eventually. Because when you take in negative, negative, you also start giving out negative. And in the end, your marriage will be destroyed. So you need to get yourself. I mean, we are not saying that it's 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 easy. It's not mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. But do make conscious efforts not to spend time mm -hmm. in the discouragement room. And what we are not we are not trying to say, for example, if you have a husband who is abusing you physically, then always just sit down. Oh, they say I shouldn't be so no, oh, no, they no, slap no, here. No, no. Oh, just beat me no, more no, because no. they say I should that's not what we are talking about. No. Don't give room to abuse. But what we are also saying is that in your own mind, we we're talking about mental uh, exercise now. That you don't dwell on the negative thing because they will wound you, they will hurt you, they, they will destroy you. It's not good for you. It's like eating junk food. Offenses, bitterness, negative things are junk. So as you eat them, they will destroy you, they will not help you. But you know, the Bible also says that whatsoever things are pure, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are lovely, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are of good report, mm -hmm. honest, mm -hmm. think of such things. Mm -hmm. Think of such things. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. So another thing that happens in this room is that the love is crucified. Yes. The love is killed. Yeah. Because love is not automatic. Love is organic. Okay. Love can grow. Love can die. 
depending on how you do it, how you think. So if you are thinking only about the negative things, if I'm with my wife and I'm always thinking, this woman is too short, this woman is too short. This is what a short woman she is. What a short woman. What a short woman. She is too short. If that's only what I'm thinking, all of a sudden you see that my love for her will start dying. My love for her will start dying. If all she's seen is my pot belly. What a, when I met him, he was so slim, like she said. Now look at his big stomach. Big stomach. No, it's she who has given me the food to eat and I, I've developed big stomach. Big stomach, big stomach, big stomach. She will stop loving me. And she'll start looking at some other man who has six pack. And before I realize, she doesn't love me anymore. So the more you focus on the negative things about your husband or your wife, the more you kill the love. Look, if the love in your marriage is dying, it is not your spouse that is killing it. If you don't feel love, it is you who are killing it. Okay? The love, you see, love is how you feel. So if you are are not feeling love it means you have focused on negative things to an extent that it is killing the love in your heart so that's why you are not feeling love towards your spouse because you have killed the love in your heart by how you have thought because as he thinketh in his heart so is he so as you think negative 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 you no longer love that woman anymore you no longer see the beauty that you used to see in that woman anymore you no longer see her as that precious vessel that you married anymore now you see her as some trash so the love gets killed that way and we have to be very very careful we have to be very 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 careful okay, Anne marie is saying she mm. was away for two weeks and she's happy to be back so welcome back it's Anne good marie. to see you Anne marie <laughs> right okay so don't kill the love by dwelling on the negative things what else happens in 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 this negative room in the negative room divorce mm -hmm. plans are made mm. once you kill the love yeah there's nothing else to stay in the marriage yeah for. so quietly you start making your plans yeah because divorce doesn't just happen no you think about people it don't just wake up and divorce yeah it is programmed in this same room it's in the same room so i can say that this room there are demons there as well yeah who will help you to break down mm -hmm. what you have built over the years mm -hmm. Okay, so they will help you to plan. Okay, I don't think this marriage will work anymore. I don't love this man anymore. I don't love this woman anymore. I don't want, I don't see any future for us. Yeah. Why don't you see any, you see, when you say they don't, I don't see any future for us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean there's no future, but you don't, you don't see. see. Yeah. You because are you seeing. are looking elsewhere. Yeah. You are looking at something else apart from the good. Yeah. So you don't see any future. You don't see any good thing. All right, okay. So this is where the divorce plans are made, mm -hmm. and then violent plans are also schemed. Yeah. So, for instance, if you keep thinking on on, on your your spouse cheating you, mm -hmm. you also start thinking of okay. If you are not very strong or you are not strong, you also start thinking of how do I also find a way of cheating him or her? Yeah. How do I repay him or her in in their own coin? Yeah. You start violent plans. This is where some people even plan to kill their husbands, plan it's to kill amazing, their wives. It's, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> Recently it was on the news, uh, 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 is it an ex-soldier, or I think it was still a soldier, who had planned to, to kill his wife through parachuting. Why? So he booked parachuting for the wife. Mm -hmm. You see this thing, they go into every place and then they leave them in the sky to drop on it. I mean, this thing, no matter how much in love we are, mm -hmm. listen, let me tell you, now, if you book one for me, I won't go. <laughs> <coughs> uh, there are some games. You don't play. I don't play. Mm -hmm. So, he booked this thing for this wife and then when the woman was about to go and do the thing, he took the kit, the parachute that she will release, into the bathroom and cut cut some some of the ropes so that when she's been released from the aeroplane when she releases the parachute it There'll will be fail nothing to hold and she'll fall then down. she'll come and just she by the time she lands on the ground she's like corned beef why was he thinking of killing her because mm -hmm. this same thing we are talking about he was seeing another woman i think he had thought of all the negative things to an extent now because this is where infidelity is bred yeah it is in the negative room that infidelity is yeah. bred as you keep thinking my wife is like this my wife is like that my wife is like this my wife's like that you begin to think that somebody else is better than your wife yeah 
Somebody else may be nicer. So this is where adultery, infidelity comes in. So he was seeing somebody else and then he planned to do this in order to take this woman away. And you know what? The beauty of it is in this same room, this man had also uh, taken insurance. So that when she life dies, insurance. So that when the money. she dies, he can cash the money and then use it to establish a better home for the next woman he is, he is cheating on this one with. And as if that was not enough, mm -hmm. he also tampered with the gas connection in the house. He really made So that just in one. case this one fails, if she still comes home, the gas will kill yeah. her at home. This is how dangerous this thing we are talking about is. This is how dangerous. Esther, you are not late, don't worry. This is how dangerous. Oh, God bless you, brother, Robert. This is how dangerous this thing we are talking about it. That when you don't control how you are thinking about your husband, if you don't learn to discipline yourself in thinking about the negative things about your husband or your wife, you can do something you never imagined. I don't think that when this man married this woman at first, he ever thought this is how he would want to finish the relationship. No. But if you don't learn to control your mind, if you don't learn to control your mind, and you allow Satan to lead you to think, oh, my wife is like this. Look at her stomach. Look at her leg. Oh, she he hasn't brushed her teeth. She's dirty. She leaves a cup of tea everywhere. And you allow it to annoy you and annoy you and annoy If you don't control it, one day you will snap and do something crazy you never imagined you would do. Many people have killed their husbands. Many people have killed their wives because they kept dwelling on these negative things. Always hanged on the negative room. Always focused on what was wrong with their marriage instead of what was working, what was good about it. So violent plans are schemed in places like this. We've heard stories where people hire, they hire somebody else to come and kill their wives for them. Yeah, the same person they, they, they stood to say yeah i love you i will always and... love you oh honey mm -hmm. and some of these people the day that this woman agreed to marry him he was even in tears so i can't believe it oh thank you so much now you are planning to get hit men to kill, <coughs> kill this woman for you you see so we've got to be very very careful we've also mentioned infidelity comes in there and then the more time you spend in a place like this, the less valuable your spouse becomes to you. That man, that woman that you are supposed to love, cherish, respect, when you spend more time thinking negative, negative, they begin to look like a dog before you. Yeah. We've got to be very, very careful. You've got to be very, very careful. Do we have any comments or we should move on? And Marie is saying the mind is very powerful, so we always have to put God in our mind. Yeah. Put away what is not of God out of your mind. Yeah. And she's also saying when there's money, that's where killing comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Salome is saying, hmm. and Nancy is saying, be careful what you have in your heart. Exactly. It could be a bad seed that is growing. That is growing. You will not know. You see, and most of the times, Satan will legitimize it for you that you have every reason to be angry. You have every every reason to hold on to it. You have every reason to, to feel this way towards your wife. You have every reason to feel this way towards your husband. But it is temptation to destroy you. That is what happened to uh, 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 Cain and Abel. Yeah. Cain thought that he had every good reason to feel, to feel anger yeah. towards Abel because yeah. why has his sacrifice been accepted and his not been accepted? Mm -hmm. But it, it ended in murder. It ended in murder. So we've got to be very, very careful how we control, how we feel about our spouses. Your spouse will offend you. Let me tell you, your husband will annoy you. Your wife will annoy you. It is part of life. They will hurt you. I, I can't tell you the number of times I've hurt this woman. We will hurt each other. But, but for your own sake, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your peace of mind, do not dwell in the room of discouragement because there are too many demons there. Don't forget the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So be careful. If you give him a chance, he will destroy you. Many beautiful marriages have been destroyed because people could not control their mind. Joyce Meyer has a book, The Battlefield of the Mind. Mm -hmm. If you haven't read it, look for it and read it. 
Learn how to control your mind. How to decide what to think about and what not to think about. For your own good, you need to learn to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, mommy, how do we win the battle to decide <laughs> which room to dwell in? Well, as for the, if you want your marriage to succeed, you will have to make a conscious effort to win the battle. Mm -hmm. Because there will always be the battle to choose between the encouragement room and the discouragement room. Mm -hmm. Now, I think one of the ways we can win this battle mm -hmm. is to be able to train yourself. Mm -hmm. Train yourself. Train yourself to rise above. There, there's always an invitation to go into mm -hmm. the negative room. Mm -hmm. And and most of the time, we respond mm -hmm. to that invitation. Yeah. Because it's easier, to, it's, easy. it's easier to get into the negative side of life than on the positive side of life. It's like building. It's easier to break something down than, than to, to build. build it. That is very true. And, and it's true. just like the encouragement and the discouragement. When mm -hmm. you get into the encouragement room, you are building. Mm -hmm. And it takes hard it's work. work. It takes effort. It takes discipline. Mm -hmm. It takes love. Mm -hmm. When you get into the discouragement room, it you are destroying. Selfishness. It takes selfishness. And it is easy. Mm -hmm. And you always have the devil to edge you on. And mm -hmm. his demons to encourage you. Yeah, you have every to, reason to. He, you to have every right. He can't do that. She can't do that. Yes, strip it down it. so for you to you you need to train yourself to rise above mm -hmm. that invitation mm -hmm. because you will be invited into the negative listen we are invited into the negative room on a daily basis mm. study on a daily basis because you can't say your spouse is not an angel mm -hmm. so your spouse will not be 100 percent correct 24 7 mm -hmm. neither are you mm -hmm. but sometimes we forget our about ourselves and we go and dwell on the negative part of our spouse mm -hmm. so there's there is an invitation you have to train yourself mm -hmm. to rise above that invitation mm -hmm. not to get into the discouragement room mm -hmm. because if you do you have to do that because you have to be mindful of the consequences of the invitation room. Mm -hmm. I mean, of the discouragement mm -hmm. room. Because of the consequences of the discouragement room, mm -hmm. you need to rise above that mm -hmm. invitation mm -hmm. to get in there. Mm -hmm. So that you will not fall prey mm -hmm. to the things that will happen to you in the, in, mm -hmm. in the discouragement room. Mm -hmm. So you've got to work. You have to work. You you've have got to train, to train yourself. Train yourself. Make a deter personal determination mm -hmm. room. It will not happen automatically. No. Like you keep saying, love is organic. Mm -hmm. It has to be watered. It has to be nurtured. Mm -hmm. It has to be taken care of to come up. Mm -hmm. In the same way, train yourself. Train yourself. Work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Not to respond to the invitation to get into that room. Mm -hmm. Else you destroy yourself and your marriage. Okay, so if we are training ourselves, in which way? In which way are we training ourselves? What are some of the things we must do in the training of ourselves? Try to see the good in your spouse. Mm -hmm. Look for Look it. Look for it. Look it, for isn't it. it very easy for us to only see the negative in our spouse and we never see the, the bad in our own selves? No. It's always our spouse, isn't it? <laughs> but we are, we, are not, we are not angels and we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we magnify our spouse's mistakes mm -hmm. and we hide ours quietly, mm -hmm. thinking I'm better than he is or mm -hmm. I'm better than she is. No. Because you see, if, if we could just spend our lives Mm -hmm. Focusing on our shortcomings, our mistakes. There will never be quarrels. There will never be war in our marriage. Yes. You know that. Because you are not focusing on the other negative, the negatives of the other person. You are focusing on your negatives to work on it. And by working on your negatives, you know, when you work on your negatives, in the long run, you tend to overlook or you, you don't even see other people's. So Jesus talks about the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. He says that you ignore the log in your eyes, but you can see the moat in somebody mm -hmm. else's mm -hmm. eye. You ignore the log in your eye. If and, and, and when he was teaching the, the, the disciples to pray, he said that our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, you cannot come. And then he goes and say, Forgive, Forgive us our trespasses. So it's like you must focus on your own trespasses and see how you are going to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But this world has made us rather start looking only at the trespasses of the other party. Mm -hmm. There's no way in prayer where he says that, you stand and say that, forgive him his trespasses. It's forgive me my trespasses. Mm -hmm. But many of us do not even see our own trespasses. No. We don't see where we are missing it. We don't see where we are hurting our spouses. Most husbands do not, if you, they, 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 they don't sit down to, think. how many husbands will call their wives and say, I acknowledge I've done this and this and this to you. Forgive me. How many wives will call their husbands? I acknowledge this and this and this what I have done. It's always I'm angry with you because you have done this, you have done that. Mm -hmm. But you are not perfect too. Yeah. 
So if we can look at things from the opposite angle, there will always be love, there will always be peace. Yeah. Can I read a few comments? Yeah. Please? Um Robert is saying sometimes bad companies will be telling you things you have not seen mm -hmm. in your marriage. Mm -hmm. That that's, is true. That's why he's saying that when they are going outside, they don't tell you when they come to, they don't say hello to you. <laughs> and Mama Juliana is saying, bring all negativity under the power of the blood. Yeah, spirituality. So that's another thing we've got to look at, that you've got to be spiritual. And Anne Marie is saying, selfishness is a big part of the relationship between our spouses. Yeah. So selfishness, lack of spirituality, lack of the word, prayerlessness. Mm -hmm. Will, will, will leave the flesh to take control. You see, when you pray as a Christian, it's so beautiful. It breaks it's the, so beautiful. It's the so ego, beautiful. doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it breaks the ego. It breaks the pride. It takes away the selfishness. It limits the power of the me mm -hmm. in you. Mm. Listen to that. Prayer limits the power of the me. Yes, because most of the time we are angry and we are in the discouragement room and all that mm -hmm. because the me is on the throne. Mm -hmm. I, I am on the throne. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the story of the man who Jesus, he, he had built, but he said, oh, tonight I'm going to harvest my crop and, mm -hmm. I'm, and I am going to do this and I am going to do that. And, I, and God said that you fool, tonight mm -hmm. your soul will be taken from you. Mm -hmm. The self is not helpful. Mm -hmm. That is why the Bible says we should put to death mm -hmm. the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because if we will be successful in our work with God and in our marriage as Christians, we have to dethrone the self. Mm -hmm. We have to, Pastor. Mm. And, the, and the self will not allow, the self will not easily go. Mm. It's a battle. Mm. That's why you need to work at it. You need discipline. You need forgiveness. That is why you need to spend time in prayer. Mm. Because when you sit under the feet of God, mm -hmm. I always say this, God's nature, Robert, God's nature is not selfish. Mm -hmm. God is love. God mm -hmm. is selfless. Mm -hmm. So the more you spend time in prayer, the more you spend time with God, mm -hmm. the more that selflessness nature of God gets to you. Mm -hmm. So you gradually dethrone the self mm -hmm. so that you can love, you can and, forgive. And, and mommy, another thing also in connection to prayer, another thing that also makes couples struggle mm -hmm. is that they are looking for love in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You see, no matter how good your husband or your wife is, they cannot satisfy your innermost desire to be loved. And this is where, once again, prayer comes in. Mm -hmm. The more you pray, you when you pray, you download love. You, you, you actually get the love that you are looking for from God in you prayer. Get fulfillment. You get fulfillment. You get, get comforted. comforted. He speaks to you. Yeah, he, he shows you his love. He, I mean, sometimes, literally, I don't know whether it is real, but sometimes I just feel like Jesus is putting his hands around yeah. me. Yeah, he comforts yes. you. And he walks with me. And, and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joys we shed as we tarry there, none other has ever known. You see, so when you spend time with him in prayer, that is where he comforts you, he cherishes you, he makes you feel worthy. There are some people who feel so worthless and they are forcing it from the husband who doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't got anything to give. Forcing it from a wife who doesn't... The wife herself, she's struggling to survive. Mm -hmm. And you are demanding this attention from her. The husband himself, he doesn't know who he is. Mm -hmm. And you are trying to draw your attention from him. You and so yourself. you frustrate yourself and you hurt yourself. And it becomes a vicious cycle of negativity. Insults, anger. That if you can spend... Let me tell you, mommy. Most of the... Troubles we have in our marriages mm -hmm. is due to lack of prayer, spiritual mm -hmm. lack of spirituality, yeah. prayerlessness. Mm -hmm. We approach too many things with human wisdom, with carnal mindsets, and we are always failing, but we never learn. And you know what? We will yeah. put the blame on every other thing, but on our prayerlessness. Mm -hmm. Right, Robert is saying couples must learn to pray together before they go to bed and pray when they wake up. Prayer will bring light to their marriage and will overshadow every darkness. Yes, that prayer is overshadows true. every darkness. That is true, my brother. We are even talking about deeper prayer. You see, your not the prayer we are praying together. The prayer we are praying together is important. But your own personal prayer life. Every Christian must have a living active prayer life a minimum of an hour with god a day mm -hmm. minimum of an hour with god a day 
when you are out there before God, Makotaya, Rabakatosa, Imantoliyama, Ribakataka, you are sweating before God. You are exchanging your weakness for strength. You are exchanging your pains for, for, for comfort. You are exchanging your fears for hope. You are exchanging your doubts for faith. You are exchanging your frustrations for, for comfort. It's like you are pouring out your heart before God. Many of us don't do it. And we know what, but I mean, Pastor, to add to what you are saying, mm -hmm. nobody, not even your husband or your wife, mm -hmm. can comfort you like God will. Yeah. Your wife is not a comforter. No. Your husband is not a comforter. The Holy Ghost the Holy is. Ghost is. The Holy Ghost the is. The Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is the only one who is a comforter. Your wife is not. So the comfort you need from your wife will not come and you'll be more frustrated. The comfort you need from your husband will not come and you'll be more frustrated. The only comforter is the Holy Ghost. So when you learn to have the lifestyle of prayer yourself, you get enough comfort from God and by so doing, you are well positioned to pass on the leftovers at least for your husband yeah. or for your wife. Yeah. So instead of you becoming a burden or a trouble, you rather a become blessing. a blessing, yeah. an encouragement yeah. to, to him or her. Mm. So prayerlessness is one major thing in our marriage. Today's people don't pray. We will not pray, but we have time to talk. We talk more than we pray. Yeah. We have issues. We talk about the issue more than we pray about it. Take it to God in prayer. Not what talk it. A friend. We have in Jesus all our sins, go to auto, and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God. Prayer. You don't, you do not own the right we do not own the right to this song. Please, Facebook. We do not own any right to these songs. Okay. Are we trials and temptations? You know that one. Yeah. Sing it in trouble. I'll go tell her. Okay. How we try yells and temptations come but we and Lord of care, precious no, Savior is our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for... No, too high. Too high. Let's change it. <laughs> <laughs> what a friend. No, too hard. You really want to sing. Okay, okay, let's go. No, but I want the people to know the words of the song. I want them to know the words of the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we are for the It's not working. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Temptation 
is God. Come back with no. Is there trouble anywhere? Lovely Emma is there. She can see for us. Lovely Emma is there. Oh, today, me. today is not working. It's not working. It's not working. But, but you see, oh, all, all that yeah. the song is trying to say is that uh, 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 today didn't work. Forgive us, okay? <laughs> Next week we'll we'll come back better. We will go and rehearse and come okay. back. Okay. So, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Prayerlessness is one major thing that is making us focus on the negative things that are happening in our marriages. Focus on the negativeness of our wives or our husbands constantly. It's prayerlessness. So watch your prayer life. Watch your fasting life. That's one of the ways to lead yourself. Lead yourself. What are some of the other ways? The word. The word. The word. Yeah. Let the word get into. You know what? The word is not powerful till it is active, till it is yeah. working. Yeah. It's not enough to know it. In the we don't even know it because we don't read it. Mm -hmm. And so those of us who know it, who read it, <laughs> we know it, but we are not using it. Mm -hmm. The word is only powerful when it is put in action, mm -hmm. when it is used. Mm -hmm. So use the word. Study the word. Mm -hmm. Joshua one eight. Mm -hmm. Study it. First Timothy 2.15 Study mm. the word mm. Know the word Let the word get into it Let the word have an effect on you mm -hmm. And then it will have an effect on the other mm -hmm. person It will affect how you react to things Yeah Because it builds your faith as well. the, the word strengthens you mm -hmm. So that you are not easily moved you see, when the world fills your heart, like, like you say that, your word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. So when the word has saturated your heart, when your husband does something, when your wife does something that you must react in a particular way, you will not react in a sinful way. Do you know why? Because mm. the word is Jesus. So when the word gets into you, it means that Jesus is in you. So Jesus becomes Jesus. a barrier. Yeah. And he he says, stops you. He stops you from doing things. He stops you from reacting. You can't talk like this. You can't this. do that. You can't react like this. No, because you can't think this way. But we ignore the word as we pass that. The nature Jesus, of Jesus. He says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they yes. do. How many times have husbands and wives been able to say, Lord, forgive my husband. He doesn't know what he's doing. And genuinely forgive. Not like we are saying it sarcastically. But we are genuinely forgiving them. Christians, we can read all the newsletters. Mm -hmm. It will amaze you. Christians know all these celebrities. Christians know why saints than the word of God. Yeah. Quotings of Buddha. Than the word of God. Why are we Christians? How would the word of God have an impact on our marriage? So let the words of Christ dwell richly in 3, you with all wisdom. I like it. Let it dwell richly. Let, let the word settle in you. Let the word get into you and have a seat in the in, in your life. Mm. The word. Then you can do what it says. But we, we, we allow negative things to settle in us. We allow the news from the world to settle in. We allow wise sayings from people, sayings from celebrities. We don't know any scriptures in the and Bible. All this, our generation has come onto, and with the advent of social media, we have come to these wonderful wise sayings of selfishness. It's like I am I mean, celebrated me. when I go. Yeah, I only yeah. go when I'm where I'm yeah, celebrated. Like that. If you don't appreciate me, then I go where I'm appreciated. It is me, 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 me. Meanwhile, Jesus says that if any man will come after me, let, let him, him deny, deny himself, himself take up his cross and, and follow, follow me. Satan has gradually crept into our theology and we didn't know. So instead of living a life of sacrifice, a life of being able to lead down our life, today's Christians don't know how to lay down their lives no and because we don't know how to sacrifice it shows in our marriages too and because we don't know how to sacrifice for our wives we don't know how to sacrifice for our husbands it's all about me 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 i me. was just going to say this i've seen that bless us put it because of that we cannot bear the fruits of the spirit da, 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 da. thank because, you and and and, and, and it is it is in bearing the fruits of the spirit that will that keep we us can away from walk the in love yeah. Yeah. It is the fruit of the spirit. It is. And I like the fact that the Bible didn't say fruits. Mm -hmm. The Bible said fruit. It's the fruit. It so is all the... of them have to be together in one. Combination of your prayer life, your Bible study life, and how you practice the word. Mm -hmm. That is what brings the, the fruit. We don't have it. We so we've got it. to be very careful. A lot of the issues.
since we are having our marriages today is because we are not praying. We have taken on board too much worldliness, too much worldliness. No prayer, no Bible study, no meditation, no sacrifice. We don't have, we are not able to learn how to die to the flesh. Pastor, we, 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 we run our marriages, if that is correct. Based yes. on the principles of the of world the and not the principles of the Bible, because there are certain things the Bible would not allow you to do. Exactly. There are certain things the Bible would not allow you to do. For instance, you cannot keep unforgiveness in your heart mm-hmm. as a married man or a married. The Bible would not allow that. David says, "If I regarded the iniquity Lord in my heart, hear the Lord me. will not hear but me." But some of us have iniquity in our heart, and we are we are singing in churches, we are parading in churches or as Christians doing also, and we think God is hearing us. Because we don't even know that the Lord will not hear us. Because we don't know what is in the word. The word. The word. The word. So you meet a lot of Christians and they parade that they are Christians, but they are very shallow. No word. Very shallow. No Many pretending to be very spiritual, uh-huh. and, but very shallow. And that is the reason why Jesus said that the storm came. The wind came. And it fell down because it was not built. Not built. Rock. Many Christians' lives are not built on the rock. And so are our marriages. Of course, your marriage is built on your spiritual life. Yeah. Your marriage is built on your spiritual life. So if your own spiritual life is built on the sand, then let me assure you that your marriage is also built on the sand. So when the storms come, as your life is going, it goes with your marriage. And it's not if they come, it is when. So they will, it will come. Come. It storms will come. Storms, come. storms are normal. They are part of. Jesus said, "In this, in this world, life, you, you will have, have trouble. trouble. So they will come. There will be trouble. Your husband will hurt you. Your wife will hurt you. You go through all the whatever you think, the pain, the hurt, and all that. But if it is built on the rock, if it is built on the word of God, if your marriage is built on the foundation, it will stand. It will stand. stand. Ah, it will stand. Pray, pray, my sister, pray. <laughs> it will stand. It will stand. It will stand." It will stand. It has to stand, my brother. Your marriage has to stand, my sister. Your marriage has to stand. Satan is eager to bring it down, but it has to stand. And if it will stand, it will depend on your spiritual status. How deep are you? How strong are you? How hot are you? Are you still are you still basing your today's spiritual life on last 10 years spiritual experiences? That but you fasted 12 years ago. Is that what you are depending on today? What spiritual experience? What current spiritual experience? What are the you current have? spiritual experience? One book I love to read Adventures in, in God, Christ. Yeah, Adventures in, in Christ, God yeah. by Charles uh, John G. Lake. You must keep getting different adventures into God. Different adventures into God. The deeper you go into God, the more secure your marriage is. And I don't mean this kind of fake spirituality that we have in our generation. Where we pretend we are spiritual outside, and yet inside us we are so weak, so broken, so light. Look, your spirituality, look like like me. My spirituality is not what I'm doing now. Preaching this to you now doesn't mean I'm spiritual. My spirituality is what I do when there's nobody around. How I spend my time. The time I spend in prayer, the time I spend in fasting, the time I spend in the word, that is what shows my spirituality. The kind of things I entertain in my head, that is what shows my spirituality. The ideas, the thoughts I entertain about the hurt people have hurt me, the, the other women who might want to entice me, the thoughts I keep in my head, that is what shows my spirituality. <laughs> Many of us are showing outward spirituality but in our hearts we are we are we are ravening wolves and it shows when trouble comes how you react in the day of temptation in the day of trouble when your wife offends you how you react when your husband offends you how you react is a is a is a, a, a proof of your spiritual status where you are and look you can't fake it you spirituality is one thing it's like pregnancy it will show you can't fake it mm-hmm. when all is going well you can fake being spiritual when all is well you can fake being spiritual as for oh holy spirit we can all say it. <laughs> as for what holy spirit <laughs> we can all say oh the spirit told me to and i can sense and i can oh, see dear. we can all say it <laughs> right having oh i saw a vision and i saw a lizard we can all say it okay but when you are tested, <laughs> how you react to that test, when you are tempted, 
when your wife is lashing it at you, 10,000 words per second, and your chest, your heart is trying to jump out of your chest, and you're able to still calm, master the tempest, it's raging, the billows, the billows are tossing high. The sky is foreshadowed with blackness. Blackness. No shelter or help is nigh. Cares thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening, a grave in the angry deep, all the ways and the ways shall obey thy will. Peace, be still, whether the wrath of the storm told sea or demons or men or whatever no water can swallow the ship where it lies the master of ocean and earth and sky oh they all shall sweetly obey thy will peace be still peace be still they all shall sweetly obey thy will peace peace be still we do not own any right to any song sung here okay all right but you see so when you are full of the spirit when you are full of the spirit right when you are full of the spirit this is what happens that as your wife is going 10,000 words per minute and your heart wants to jump out of your chest the holy spirit is able to say peace 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 and you are able to hold yourself instead of striking her because one reason why men become aggressive to their wife they don't know how to talk at the same rate that women can talk mm -hmm. and so in their frustration they yeah, strike yeah, yeah. but if you're a spiritual man when the holy ghost has arrested you your wife cannot say anything for you to jump on her yeah. if the holy ghost has arrested you as a woman there's nothing your wife can your husband can do for you to sit down and call him a foolish man, idiot, useless man. You can't call your husband things like that when the Holy Ghost has arrested your heart. But the Holy Ghost is not just going about pretending to be spiritual. When you are disappointed, when you are hurt, when you've seen or you've heard your a wife, a woman has called you and said that your husband has just left my bedroom. When you are you are so much deep into Christ, you will still be able to stand. You still be able to stand. That is where your spirituality shows. Hmm. That is where your daily Bible study, that is where your daily prayer life are going to kick in. We don't do our daily prayer life because we always want bread. We don't pray daily because we want God to give us food. As for food, even if you don't pray, you will get your food to eat. We pray to bank up strength for the day of reckoning, yeah. for the day of challenges, for the day of temptation, for the day of trials. Jesus told Peter, he said, I watch and pray for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So those of you who have not still learned to develop a prayer life, what you have done is that you have positioned yourself to fail on the day the storm comes. Those of you who have not hidden the scriptures in your heart and you think it's not necessary for you to know the Bible, you think only preachers are supposed to know the Bible, you are hurting yourself. You see, God is not stupid to say that, hide the word in your heart. He says, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall you make your marriage prosperous. And have good success. For then shall you make your way prosperous. Includes your marriage. It includes everything. And have a good success. If your marriage will succeed, it depends on how you organize your day-to-day -day living. Yeah. Most of the time, in the comfortable days, we think, oh, it doesn't really matter if I don't pray. Mm. 
it doesn't really matter if I don't study my Bible. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And you laugh at people who are rather trying to be spiritual. Hmm. And then when the enemy strikes, you have nothing to hold on to. Hmm. When temptation comes, you have nothing to hold on to. People, we've got to go back. We've got to go back. I think we've dwelt on the spiritual side a little, mommy. What else do we need to do to bring ourselves out? Right, agree that everyone has downs where they mm -hmm. need to improve on. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you have that at the back of your mind. Okay, my spouse has downsized they need to improve on. Mm -hmm. I also have downsized I need to improve on. Mm -hmm. That will stop you from staying in the discouragement room for a very long so time. So we make it a project instead of... Uh, uh, a complaint. Yes. Or yeah yeah so we, we we agree that this is the area my wife or my husband needs to work on mm -hmm. and if you can help them to work on help mm -hmm. them to work on it some wives will say that my husband sometimes he knows this is his weakness mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to take responsibility if we want to say okay how this thing that you do it hurts it, i i am not going to kill you about it let's acknowledge that it's a weakness that needs to be worked on but some husbands will complete. I have seen it over and over, mommy. Yeah. So my husband's completely just ignore it. It's like, yeah, it's my week. You see that, so it is fine. I am not ready to work on it. You pray for them. You still so pray for them. that's where intercession comes yeah. in. Yeah. You pray for, you also pray that God will open their eyes for them to see that it is a weakness. Yeah. Because when you acknowledge something, it's easier mm -hmm. to work on it mm -hmm. than if you are not acknowledging mm -hmm. it. So pray that God will open the eyes for them to know that mm -hmm. this is a weakness they need to work on mm -hmm. so that they can start working on it. Mm. Right. So pray, pray, pray. Yeah, exactly. Like just like if you say, God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, that you will reap. Yeah. So when you sow canality, 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 eventually you will reap. You will reap, yeah. you reap the, the whirlwind and, and you wouldn't like it. Okay. So like, like, like I was saying, if your husband or your wife is not responding, some husbands too, maybe you see your wife has a particular attitude mm -hmm. and you, you are trying to see it as, okay, it's a weakness. Let us work on it. And this wife doesn't care. Mm -hmm. But like you said, prayer, intercession. Mm -hmm. because you can pray for that man. You can pray for that woman until he herself, himself or she herself will wake up one day and say, listen, I think this is that I'm doing. It's no good. I want to change. I want to work on it. Yeah. But instead of prayer, we turn it into nagging. We yeah. turn it into memory. Yeah. We turn it into complaining. Yeah. And sometimes, maybe I'll just chip this in. Sometimes yeah. we see the issues or the problem, mm -hmm. but we do not address it immediately. Mm -hmm. We wait till it becomes a full, full blown, blown. And then if, if it gets to that stage, mm -hmm. it's quite difficult to work on it. Yeah. So when you see some of these things, I mean, they have issues. When you see it, at the initial stages, try and work on it there. So that then one, one of the saddest things, like you're saying, is especially during the courtship stage, you see that the man has an uncontrollable anger. And but you because you are it. eager to marry, yeah. you allow. You can see that this woman, her mouth, but you, because you are eager to marry her, you marry her. And then now, after you've married her, now you see the same thing that you refuse to see. Sometimes people even call you and say, this person you want to marry is like this. Mm -hmm. you, because you are eager, you, re you don't listen to anybody. Now, when you've entered a marriage, you say, hey, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, that was your own problem. You saw it and you didn't do anything about it. So let us deal with things before they, they uh, 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 degenerate into, into something that is okay, a, big, a, a big problem. What okay. of if your husband does not go to church with you, what do you do? Pray for her. You, you, him, you should have known you should have known that the person you were going to marry doesn't go to church. <laughs> you see, some of these things, if if maybe both of you were not going to church before you married, and then after you married, you've become born again, you started going to church, you keep on praying, keep on living a good Christian character before him, and by your example, you, he'll be drawn to Christ. But you were going to church. You were a Christian. This man came, he wanted to marry you. He doesn't go to church. Mm -hmm. And you agree to marry him, then it was your choice. There's not much we can tell you about. Yeah. Or it, maybe he was going to church because another thing we have seen a lot of deception now. The brothers pretend to go to church, they join a church for a few days, get to marry their sister, and then after that, they are scorned. If that happened, then also one thing I can say that you were deceived. You didn't pray long enough. Maybe you rushed into the thing. Yeah. Because Christianity cannot be faked. If a person is genuinely a Christian, you will know, you will see that this guy is genuine. Yeah. So sometimes our sisters make a lot of mistakes and then 
when it all blows up, they come disturbing the pastors. <laughs> Sometimes we even warn them that they refuse to see. Yeah. You see, you see, God, God will help us. But no matter what, still love him. Don't, don't cast him out. Still love him. Still appreciate him. You are a Christian. If he doesn't want to go to church, you be a Christian. Go to church, but be a Christian. By showing your Christian example before him, he could be changed and he will turn and follow you to go to church. Okay, sometimes those who go to church, maybe you go to church, your spouse doesn't go to church, you harass your husband or your wife, follow me to church, follow me to church. You can't get, let me tell you ladies, you can never get your husband to do things by forcing him. This is one, let me say it again. You can never get your husband to do anything by forcing him. It is by humble persuasion, it is by kind behavior, it is by exemplary living and by prayer it is when god convicts him that he doesn't men are directed by god not by a, a wife's nagging so know that this is one thing we learned in our marriage at some point when we kept arguing and arguing and arguing i went to god in prayer said god what is happening you told me this was a woman i should marry so what is happening why are we arguing and he said because you don't understand each other there is a missing link, and that missing link is me. So, if you have a trouble with her, if there is something you want her to understand, tell me. I know how to tell her. And tell her to do the same. But if she has something she wants you to know, she should tell me. I will know how to tell you. And so I told her that this is what the Lord is saying. And we decided to work with it. And it brought peace. It brought peace. If I am doing something that she doesn't like, she knows what to do. Talk to God about it. God will find a way of letting me know and change. You see, it is faith. It is faith. This, this is how to live the supernatural life. Most of the time, we talk about supernatural living in church, but we don't know how to bring it into our day-to-day -day life. This is miraculous living, supernatural living. So it's not like everything. Like if I want tea, I tell God, tell my wife I want tea. That's not what we are talking about. But the deeper things, the things that will bring argument, will bring struggle, we bounce it to God and God knows how to send it to each other in a way that will help us to, 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 to live in a peaceful way. So it's spirituality. Spirituality. And what was I saying before I even drifted into that? Uh, 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 about prayer. Uh, 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 okay, I think we're responding to a question. Yeah. All right. So uh, no one is perfect. Another thing, take time and truthfully look at your own negative sides too. Because you also have them. Yeah. And because sometimes, mommy, sometimes our spouses are behaving the way they are doing that is irritating us. Because we are also doing something that is irritating yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So I have seen a lot of changes take place in marriages. When one person decides, I'm, I'm going to forget about my husband. And I'm only going to forget about my, I'm, I'm only going to focus on myself. Yeah. I'm going to improve on myself. I'm going to make myself an A-star wife. No matter what, I'm going to make myself an A-star wife. Or I'm going to make myself an A-star husband. Irrespective of what my wife is doing. And before you realize, it's like, wow. Your wife looks at you and says, oh, this guy has changed. Mm. And then naturally, your wife also begins to change to follow you. Yeah. Somebody must start. And it doesn't start with you telling the other person, you go first, you go first. Mm -hmm. It's like children. When our children have to bath in the morning, it's always like that. You go first. You go first. I went first yesterday. You go first. And it is a fight because they are children. But if we are mature in our marriages, you must aim at making you yourself a better person first. Forget about whether your husband or your wife will want to make themselves a better person. Everything that your wife or your husband has said that you do and it irritates her, you sit down and focus on yourself. To address those things. Don't mind her. Whether she will improve or not. It's her problem. Improve on yourself. Improve on yourself. How you talk. How you react. How you respond. Your responsibilities. Improve on yourself. Most of the time. The other party will naturally follow. What yeah. do you say? Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Because when you improve on yourself. They see the change. Mm -hmm. They see that. Oh, okay. My husband or my wife used to do this. Mm -hmm. But now they are not doing it anymore. But mm -hmm. Because of the particular way you were living. Mm -hmm. They also built a defense for that thing. Mm -hmm. Or they also started behaving in a particular way. Mm -hmm. To counteract that your attitude. Mm -hmm. But once you change. Mm -hmm. It's normal. It's natural. They will also automatically change to suit 
your new way of life. Right. So it's, it's important that you also look at your own negative side too and work on it so that your spouse can also work you don't always have to wait for them to go first. You can yeah. always go first. Yeah, I mean, it, it's about you. We, today we are talking about you. Don't, don't think about him or her. Think about you. Me. 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 For some reason, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Look, sometimes when you look at your own life, you yourself, you can look and say, Ah, Lord, help me. I think I haven't been a good wife. Yeah. I think I could have been a better wife. I think I could have been a better husband. Sometimes we must just stop pointing the the finger on the other person and look at our own selves. Mm. Look at our own selves. Okay, so aim not to hide your faults whilst amplifying your spouse's faults. We do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we think that we are perfect. You see, yeah. Sometimes we get into some of these things because we see ourselves as perfect. And we see our spouses as imperfect. You see, it's because we understand ourselves more than we understand the other party. Yeah. We can forgive ourselves but more than we can forgive the other person. We can have reasons why we did this. But we think that he yeah, or she should not have any them. reasons why they should do that. Yeah. It's amazing. So we only think about our reasons. We don't think that they can have reasons. Yeah. So stop amplifying your wife's faults. Stop amplifying your husband's faults. Amplify your own faults. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my husband, not my in-law, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Sometimes you have to know that it is you. Sometimes the trouble is you. Sometimes the problem is you. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Mm. Work on yourself. Leave your husband to God. Leave your wife to God. Can I read a few comments? Yes, please do. Right. Um, Bless Beyond Belief is saying, Prayer and exemplary living transforms people. Thank yeah, you. That's true. And then she's also saying, Take it to the Lord in prayer, supernatural living. Yeah. Pastor Emmanuel is saying, There's a strong attack of the enemy on marriages. Yeah. Thank God for ministries like this. Quite frankly, marriage is not for the faint hearted. Yeah. It's an everyday denial of self. A exactly. Call to service. Yeah. Uh, Brother Emmanuel is saying, What are we talking about? Lovely Emma is saying, Good point. It's me, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. And then she's a blessed is again say, PhD in amplifying other shortcomings. Take the road out of your eye first. Exactly. It's blessing is saying, It's me, oh Lord. Yes. Help yes. me. Yes. So sometimes we have to go to God in prayer and say, God, I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good wife. I'm failing my husband, Lord. I'm failing my husband. So have you ever been into prayer like that? Where you say, Lord, this is my anger. I'm failing my wife. I'm failing my wife. Help me. This is somebody's daughter. I'm hurting her. Lord, help me. Help me to change. Lord, I have a problem. This is my lying. I'm hurting my husband. This is my stealing. This is my cheating. I'm hurting. This is my lack of self control This is my laziness. I'm hurting my wife. I'm hurting my husband. Lord, help me. This is my mouth. Lord, I'm hurting my wife. I'm hurting my husband. Sometimes go to God and cry on him. That Lord, I think I'm being a pain to my wife. I'm being a pain to my husband. I'm, I'm harassing them. It's no good. Help me. This is not what I promised her. I think I'm failing her. I'm failing him. Help me. Sometimes we've got to take the bull by the horn and God will help you. And God will help you. God will help you. God will help you. Amen. God will help you. <laughs> so if you are a man or a woman of love, when you are walking in the love of God, one thing you, are, you decide is that I know that the head is there. I know that my wife has hurt me. I know that my husband has hurt me. I know that these hurts are there, but I have decided to go the other way. I have decided not to allow the negative things to control my life and my future. And another thing I want you to know is that every time your wife or your husband does something that hurts you, the devil will come and invite you. Let's go to that room. I told, we've told you there are two rooms. 
the discouragement room and the encouragement room. Every time your wife hates you, every time your husband hates you, and they will hate you, it's normal. Marriage is invitation to be hurt. You will be hurt, okay? Every time you are hurt, Satan will come. Come into this negative room. Come, let's talk about all the bad things he has done for you since he married you. All the bad things he has done to you. Come. Let's look at how bad he is. Let's look at how evil she is. Come. Don't go. Don't go. Just like the way you advise your children. If a stranger asks you to come, don't go. In the same way, the stranger, the thief cometh no but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Every time you are invited, when you are left alone, to think about how wicked your husband is. Every time you are invited to think about some bad things your husband did three years ago, four years ago. Satan is only looking for an opportunity to destroy their marriage. Don't go. Don't follow him. You only enter that room with the understanding that you are going there to look for prayer points to pray for your husband or your wife. Not to go and self-pity. Oh, look at me. All my classmates are happy in their marriages. Look at me alone. That No, that is not for you as a child of God. Now, you have to understand that as the name implies, the discouragement, the discouragement room has never helped anybody to build a marriage. No. Nobody went into the discouragement room and came and said, wow, now I have a powerful marriage. I was so discouraged and now my marriage is good. No. You go there so that you will be invited to destroy the marriage. It is called discouragement room for a reason. You go there to for the marriage to be destroyed. <laughs> okay? So it has never helped anybody to, to, to get a better marriage. So don't go there. We could also say that love um for you to avoid getting deep into the discouragement room. Yeah. Believe the best in people mm -hmm. and give them the benefits of the doubt, yeah. even when it feels contrary. So sometimes mm -hmm. you are seeing something else, mm -hmm. but still give them the benefits of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Give them another chance. Mm -hmm. In marriage, we give each other chances, mm -hmm. not one chance. Mm -hmm. Give and give and give and give again. Mm -hmm. Believe the best in people. Believe yeah. the best in your spouse. Give them the benefits of the doubt. Maybe. Never settle with that idea that your wife is a wicked woman no. or your husband is a, a wicked, wicked woman, woman. No. always see that they are making married. mistakes yeah. they are making they are they are not being careful enough but don't write them off as being wicked because mm -hmm. once you write them off that way you will not give yourself a chance to no. to prove that okay. they are not wicked mm -hmm. so give them the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. because you may be wrong it could, you may be wrong mm -hmm. You may also make a mistake somewhere. You, mm. It may not be as you are thinking mm. or as you are seeing. Mm -hmm. So give them a chance and a chance and a chance and a chance again. Mm. So when you are invited to the negative room, remember mm. that, look, I choose to see the best in my spouse. Yeah. I am not going. Yeah. I'm going to give my spouse the benefits of the doubt, even if I'm not seeing it like that. Sometimes people may even come and tell you, oh, don't, right, this man, he's like this. You, this woman, she's like that. Don't listen. Don't follow the ideas. Both people and demons will come and suggest him, don't follow. Don't follow. Okay? And then also, uh, 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 love fills the unknowns with, I mean, the unknowns with negative assumptions. Love refuses to fill the unknowns with negative assumptions. So sometimes, let's say your husband is going to work. He is supposed to come at a given time. He is not coming. Immediately, you begin to think maybe he's with another woman. Maybe refuse to entertain negative thoughts when you are not sure of what is happening. When your wife comes home, and we watched the movie recently, where the guy came home and his wife has had a bath. And immediately like, why have you had a bath? Yeah. Who was here? Who was here? It means you've gone to fornicate. That's why you've had a bath. You see, don't be too suspicious. Don't be quick. To suspect that your husband or your wife is doing something bad. Don't be too quick to think that your husband is taking advantage of you. Or your wife is taking advantage of you. Give them the benefit of the doubt. And even when your, your worst expectations are proving right. Don't hold on to them. Still learn to forgive and move on. 
If it's something you can work on it, work on it and let it be gone. Don't keep bringing it back. Mm -hmm. Let it be gone. If you agree to forgive, then forgive and move on. If you cannot forgive and you have to divorce, that is your problem. Mm -hmm. Then divorce. I'm not, please don't say I ever sat here to tell you to divorce. I'm not encouraging anybody to divorce. But for your own sake, and this is where you've got to be spiritual. This is what I'm saying. Eh? If you are in the flesh, it's not possible. But Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. There's no sin that cannot be forgiven. There's no shortcoming of a husband or a wife that cannot be forgiven. So with God, all things are possible. When you depend on God, he will give you the grace and the strength to overcome. Okay? So even when your worst expectations have been fulfilled, still learn, look for grace, how you can overcome it and move on to go forward with your life. Can I also say that, mm. I mean, for you to get out of the discouragement room, mm -hmm. feed on the positive. Yeah. Feed on the positive. Feed. Going back to the book of Philippians 4 again, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are pure, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are beautiful, whatsoever mm -hmm. things are of good reports, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever mm -hmm. things are honest, mm -hmm. when you feed if when you feed love with negative things, mm -hmm. it dies. Yeah. When you feed it with the positive things, it grows. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it grows. So for you to avoid getting into the discouragement room constantly, mm -hmm. learn to feed on the positive. Yeah. Your, no matter how evil you think your husband is, no matter how evil you think your wife. Is. Mm -hmm. There are still positive things about them yeah. that nobody else has. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Feed on that. Amen. 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 And I said the only reason why you go into the negative room is to look for the reason to pray for your spouse. And then you also have to know that your decision to pray for your husband or your wife should not be because or your decision to forgive them pray for them stand with them should not be because they deserve it it should be because you are love you are walking in love okay because say that whilst we were yet sinners whilst we did not uh, merit it christ died for us and so Christ is love. If we are walking in the nature of Christ, we don't do things for each other because they have changed, they have repented, they look good. No, we do it because we are good. We didn't repent before God came to us. We didn't change before he came to us. It was when he came to us that we repented. Okay? So let us have that mindset. Mommy, do you have a few more minutes for us to just finish it? Kill it off. So we don't have a part two of this and then next week we have something else. Okay, what happens when we settle in the encouragement room? When we decide to go positive, when we decide to go positive, what happens? You begin to see your spouse in a different light, mm -hmm. more positive, mm -hmm. because you are now dwelling on the positives. Yeah. So you see them in that positive light you are dwelling on. The negative aspect goes down. You, you begin to see a new aspect of your spouse. Yeah. Complete. I mean, things you don't even know your spouse. Has, has qualities qualities yeah. you don't know your spouse has because you are now choosing to focus on the light to mm -hmm. focus on the positive thing about them you they, when you when you when you start seeing you know when you start seeing the good in somebody mm -hmm. the other things in the person comes out begin to come out yeah because and you, i have seen this thing has been real in our own marriage yes during the period where we were having arguments and all that it was like seeing you even annoyed me but when by the grace of God I was able to overcome and come with this, I started seeing all sorts of wonderful things in you that I never That's thought of yeah. at first. Me too. <laughs> you see, so <coughs> so it is very, very important. Look, there are so many good things in your husband, there are so many good things in your wife that you are not seeing yet. You are not seeing yet when you choose to now. Forget about the negatives and only dwell on the positive. You begin to, oh, so my husband is this. So my wife is that. And you will begin to love them more. You will begin to love them more. And the more you love them, the more you begin to see more. And we will edge each other on, on to good works. Yeah. We will edge each other on, on to good works. Okay, what else for me? You will also learn many more wonderful qualities that you have missed in the past. That's mm -hmm. what we said. Just following mm -hmm. on from that. Mm -hmm. Because now when you start seeing the good things in mm -hmm. your spouse, you are giving them the opportunity to demonstrate more good things. Yeah. 
I mean, deep collect onto deep. Mm. So they mo- they said, okay, so now my spouse thinks that I am good. Mm-hmm. Let me even work harder mm. to be a better person. Yeah. Let me work harder to improve on the good thing they are seeing. Mm. So you learn more wonderful qualities you mm. may have missed in the mm. past because you miss those qualities because you were not focusing on the good side. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't magnify the, mm-hmm. your spouse's good aspects. You were rather magnifying the negative ones. But when you start seeing them differently, mm-hmm. you you know that oh wow, there are more wonderful qualities your has and that will even encourage you to do more wonderful things for him yeah. and that will trigger him to also now react to do more wonderful things you start cooking some nice light soup you start doing I mean, some you, wonderful you even things go together out of your way to do things that under normal circumstances you wouldn't do yeah because now you think that your spouse believes in you your spouse is there for you. your spouse is saying you are something you are not so you try to 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 i mean come up to that thing that your spouse is saying in Charlie, you. mommy negative thinking has robbed people of so much in marriages. Very bad. Negative thinking has robbed people of so much, so much, so much in marriages. Another important thing is that dreams and goals cannot be met. Because you know that a lot of great things that should be done in marriages are put on hold because we are angry. Yeah. Because we are angry, we are, we are quarreling, we have we think our wife is like this we think our husband is like that and so we hold back i can see i give you that some people are just good at holding back mm. okay so you hold back and hold back and as you are holding back time is yes. flying time is by. Not waiting for you time is not waiting for you and you are wasting resources that you know that the bible says that speak up a little you, you i know you are tired this has been a long you. one you bear the you bear the yoke in your youth yeah so there are certain things you can do as a at some point in your marriage. You know that is one of the things that helped me to change quickly about my anger time spans. <laughs> you should have kept getting angry. I would have left because I would have gone all in the early years, right? When I got angry, it would take a minimum of three days for me to calm down. And during that three days, it means I am not eating, I am not being sexually positive towards her and all that. And I was missing, and that was, I mean, at the early, we married early, in our early 20s, right? So, so, everything was real fresh. And Satan was deceiving me to miss the freshness of the Jews. Because of anger. And God told me this same thing she's saying, that look, there is a time and season for everything. You are missing out on the best times of this marriage through anger. You are angry. You are denying yourself. You are not eating a food. You are eating junk food because you are angry. You are not being uh, responsive towards her sexually. Don't think that you are going to have it like this forever. Make hay whilst the sun shines. And I got up and I repented. Look, whilst you are angry with your wife, whilst you are angry with your husband, for all those days, weeks, months, some of you even years, that you are holding your wife back, down you are holding your husband down don't forget that time is passing you by and the time once lost you won't get it back you are not going to call please it is called what <laughs> Jen Che or something you are not going to get those times back those periods are gone forever so be careful be careful. The sweet times that you are denying each other, that time is not going to come again. And even more sad is that great things that you could have accomplished together okay. are passing you by. There are some properties you could have built together, bought together. They are passing you by because you are angry. You are focusing on the negativity of each other. There are some new child you should have given bed together. Some couples, because they are not feeling good towards each other. This is their childbearing period. But because of anger, I'm not going to get pregnant for him. I'm not going to get her pregnant. Mm -hmm. They are waiting. But the day that they wake up and say, hey, we we actually decided we wanted to have two children, it will be too late. And guess what, Pastor? The Holy Ghost would have said bye to them. Because the Holy Ghost will not stay in a marriage where there's unforgiveness, where there's sadness, where there's all those things. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Ghost leaves your marriage, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know who gets into the marriage. Satan gets. <laughs> Nature abhors vacuum. Yeah. Either God has filled the marriage or Satan has filled it. One of them will definitely fill it. 
Okay, so whilst you are busy allowing the enemy to make you focus on the negative things happening, you are missing out. Time is passing you by. Time and tide wait for no man. There are some things you should accomplish now. So look, your unity should possibly will make you work in church and advance the kingdom of God in a, a glorious way. But because you are fighting, you and your husband, you have withdrawn your kingdom services. You are no longer preaching the gospel. You are no longer doing the kingdom work you are supposed to do because you are busy fighting. Do you know, mommy, that when nations go to war, they don't have time to do development? Oh, yeah. When nations are at war, there's no time to build houses. There's no time to build factories. There's no time to build roads. Because all the, 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 the men are at war killing each other. And when we allow negativity to control our marriages, that is what happens. We end up using all our energy, all our resources to fight instead of using it to build. And dreams, goals... Are left behind but when you choose to go into the positive side now these things begin to come to bear and, and and new talents new 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 abilities that you never knew new interests that you never knew you had are developed because you have decided not to waste your energy fighting not to waste your energy fighting you cannot you see economics they say that you cannot use the same resource for this and for that at the same time. What is it called? Cost. Opportunity cost. The energy, the time that you are using to fight, that is the same thing you should have used to do something great in your life. But it's going in because you are busy fighting. You have allowed Satan to make you believe that fighting is more important than peace. Fighting is more important than joy. Fighting is more important than love. So you have decided to stay on the side of fighting. So stay there. But time is passing you by. Some great miracles you should have received are passing you by. Some experiences you should have had in life are passing you by. And when you are holding on to the, fast, the fight, too, mm -hmm. you are not happy. The, and you your yourself joy, are not happy. Your joy leaves you. Mm -hmm. You don't have joy. Mm -hmm. You cannot give your spouse joy. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the home is not joyful mm -hmm. because you are fighting. Yeah. And it, it just stalls everything. Mm -hmm. It just stalls everything. Sometimes when there are children, it affects the children. It affects themselves. your children. Sometimes when we build this negativity, it affects your children. Because the way you even talk to your children about their father or about their mother, it shows. Mm -hmm. It wounds them. Look, you think you are angry and you are legitimately calling their father who oh, is not a serious man. Your father is always like this. Your father is that, that. But that is their identity. That is their father. If my father is a fool, who am I? If my mother is an idiot, who am I? If an idiot gave birth to me, if a fool gave birth to me, who am I? So whilst you are busy focusing on the downside of your, your spouse, you are wounding your children without knowing you are wounding your and children without exactly knowing. Sometimes they get up with that picture in their mind. Exactly. And then they also treat their spouse exactly what exactly. they saw. Exactly. Yeah. Either they themselves will not even be able to go into marriage because they saw their parents' marriages were, were so dirty, so nasty. They don't want to marry at all. Yeah. They, want, they, or, say, they say they want peace. Yeah. Or they will go into marriage and like Pastor Sally is saying, they will go and pass the same thing on to the other party because that is how marriage is supposed to be. Or they go in and they're already armed because <laughs> this is how my mother treated my father. You say free, they pull their bazooka because yeah. hey, I'll not allow any woman to treat me yeah. the way my mother treated my father. Yeah. So we've got to be very, very careful. We've got to be very, very careful how we are holding on to some of these things. Offenses will come. But let us learn to let go for the sake of our children, for the sake of our own peace, for the sake of our own life. How long do we have to live on earth? How long? When you are blessed is when you get 70. By, by dint of strength, then God helps you. Maybe you get to 80. After 80 is super grace. How long do we have that we are going to even waste one day on quarrels and misunderstandings? You must enjoy. The Bible says enjoy with the wife of your youth, not quarrel with the wife of your youth. Mm -hmm. So let us not give the devil a chance. 
Let's not give them. I, it doesn't matter. Look, I, it matters. Don't get me wrong. It matters. I, I don't know how you are feeling. So I'm not going to pretend like I know how you are feeling. I, I don't know what your wife has done to you. I don't know what your husband has done to you. I cannot pretend. You know how you are feeling. But I'm only imploring to you as a servant of God. Begging you in the name of Jesus. That it is not good for you to follow the tangent of bitterness and offense and negativity. It's not good for you yourself. It's not good for you. It is not good for you. It opens up for Satan to be able to do things that he is not supposed to be able to do to you. So you've got to be careful not to allow your dreams, your visions, your aspirations, your health, and even your health. You know that when you think of negative things, it affects your immune system. Yeah. yeah. Negativity affects your immune system. It affects your immunity. You become prone, you're exposed to sicknesses and diseases. Dangerous ones. Don't do it, my brother. I don't know what your wife did. Don't do it, my sister. I don't know what your husband did, but please, let it go. Switch your mind. Switch your mind. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But it has to come from a heart of sacrifice. Beloved, I, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present yourself a living sacrifice. If your ego is on the throne, you cannot do this thing I'm talking about. I beseech you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, dead, holy and acceptable unto God. So that you'll be able to prove uh, uh, and be not conformed to this world. Do not conform to the standards of this world. Many of you are running your marriages with human counsel, with human wisdom, with human intelligence, with intellectual sayings. Look, intellectuals did not create marriage. God created marriage. Amen. God created marriage, not intellectuals. Don't build your marriage on intellectuals unless you are finished building it on God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you will be able to prove that God is good. You will be able to prove that God instituted marriage for your good and not for your pain. God did not create marriage for it to bring you down. He created it for it to bring you up. Don't allow Satan to turn it upside down for you, no matter the experiences you've gone through. Don't. Don't. You are able to stand. Don't allow Satan to, to, to turn you into a victim. Don't. We are not victims. No matter what we've been through, we are not victims. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Our identity should not be drawn from what our wives did, what our husbands did. Our identity should be drawn from what Jesus has done on the cross for us. Rise above your wife's behavior. Rise above your husband's behavior. And take on the nature of Christ. What Christ's behavior has done for you. He became poor that we might become rich. He, he lost everything that we must gain everything. You are, you are a prince. Look, if nobody has told you before, I'm telling you. You are a princess. You are precious. You are important. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are a great person. <laughs> We've got another hymn up there. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. It is true. Please. Build yourself on God, not on your husband, not on your wife. Build yourself on the word of God. Don't take your identity from, because your husband abused you, so now you feel you are an abused person. No, because your wife abused you, you call yourself an abused person. No, Christ has died for you. You are precious. You are important. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. You are, you are, you are a king. You are a prince. You are a princess. That is what you are. Get your identity from Christ. Not from this world. This world will beat you. This world will call you a woman. This world will call you black. This world will call you poor. This world will call you an immigrant. This world will call you all sort of things. But how does Jesus see you? How does God see you? That is what matters. See your identity from Christ. Not the pains you've been through. Not the pains you've been through. Not the troubles you've been through. Not the disappointments you've been through. Don't let those things define you. Don't let those things define you. My friend is saying you are blocking my beautiful face. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for blocking your beautiful face. Right. I think 
I think I've 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 just blown my steam. <laughs> finish us off. Finish us off. Right. So in conclusion, yeah. we, we I'll say that maybe a quick recap. Mm -hmm. Two rooms we allow in our heart. Yeah. Discouragement room and encouragement room. Yeah. The discouragement room keep all the memories of the evil things mm -hmm. we think our spouse or the our spouses have done, the bad things, the negative memory and all those things. Mm -hmm. The encouragement room dwells on the positive and the good aspects mm -hmm. of our spouse. Mm -hmm. Now the choice to either stay in the negative room or the positive room mm -hmm. and depends entirely on you. Mm -hmm. You have a choice as to which room you want to stay in. Yeah. And which if you want to be to... negative and you allow it to destroy you, yeah. it's your choice. If yeah. you want to be positive and allow it to build you up, it's to... your choice yeah. as well. And I'll encourage all of us to stay in the encouragement room, to spend more time in the encouragement room. And as much as possible, avoid the invitation to get into the negative room. Yeah. If ever you have to go into the negative room, mm. if ever you have to, sorry, the discouragement, if ever you have to go into the discouragement room, mm. it is to go in there and find prayer topics for your spouse. Yeah. Just to go in there and find the things that need to be worked on mm. and work on it in prayer and in encouragement and love and all that for your spouse. Mm. Avoid the invitation to go into the discouragement room. Let alone take a seat there because it will not be to your help. Amen. Stay in the encouragement room. Yeah, and we said that one thing that will help you to stay on that side is be drunk in the spirit. Prayerfulness, the word. Prayerfulness and the word will help you to be drunk in the spirit so that the world, when the world beats you, you don't feel it, okay? Because this world, you will have trouble. So be full of the Holy Ghost through prayerfulness and Bible. Get the word into your system so that you will not easily be moved by what this world will do against you. Mommy, today we need to pray. Yeah, I think we need to pray. We need to pray. Someone has lost all her gas. We need to pray. For all our brothers and sisters who are hurting. Yeah. Those who possibly they have been deceived by the enemy to dwell. So I can see me, Mr. Emmanuel, that I just feel like asking him to pray. <laughs> oh, those who have gone through so much hurt, so much pain, and that pain is, is, is weighed them down and it's is disturbed them so much. And they want the Lord to... To, 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 to restore them. Some have followed the negative without even knowing. And, and now they are so pained that they wish. I believe that somebody listening to me said, if I had known this and I would not have followed what this man did. I would not have followed what this woman did. I've gone to waste years just following it, being angry, being angry, and it never led anywhere. It never led anywhere. We're going to pray today. We're going to ask the Lord, Father, restore restore wherever there is pain wherever there is there is there is there is hurt wherever there is disappointment lord let there be a restoration let's lift our voices and begin to pray marco shalabadabaha Ibron Doriana Laba, Ripaho Shakalabo, Sian Tanamanama. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my hearers before you, those on here live with me, those who are going to listen to it, O oh God, in the future. I lift them up before you, O oh God, those who are, have been hurt by marriage. Your intention was never for marriage to, to become a tool of hurt, but Satan, O oh God, has infiltrated, and the thing that is supposed to be a blessing has been turned around as a means of hurting each other. Some have picked up depression. Some have picked up physical injuries. Some have picked up emotional injuries of all sorts because of marriage. Today, Lord, you are the healing one. The word says that the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. This afternoon I pray, rise over every such marriage, O oh God, and release healing, O oh God, soothe the pain of that wife for God who is locked up in that bedroom is weeping and doesn't know what to do because she's so hurt and she never imagined marriage to be so painful she's been frustrated and abused by her husband oh god no man will understand her no counseling will heal her wound if you do not soothe it oh god the man who is almost going mad because he almost believes she's married a witch oh god who is frustrating him day in and day out lord i pray that you would hold him with your own hands oh god comfort him and strengthen him oh god that 
couple that do not know what to do next to God because they seem to have exhausted all avenues and they still don't know what else to do. Oh God, arise and let your enemies be scattered. Satan, oh God, is our number one enemy because he knows that marriage is your number one institution. But today, oh God, I stand up as your servant and I command every force of darkness that has risen up against every marriage here to live right now in the name of Jesus. I bind every force that has been let loose in any marriage causing havoc in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, show yourself strong in this marriage. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak love. I speak understanding. We shut off the rooms of negativity. We shut off the links of negativity. We break the chains of negativity from our marriages in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for the release of that grace and the balm of Gilead, oh God, to heal wounds and to draw your children into the room of encouragement, the room of positivity. The Lord we will look up to you, oh God, and, and we'll know that no matter how hard things look like, uh, our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth, uh, and you will make our marriages stand, oh God. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. And because we know who holds our future. And Lord, our marriages are worth, oh God, and committing to again, uh, our marriages are worth trusting in again because you live because you live we are not alone we are not left to face these battles alone we know as we call on you you will help us I know you will turn our husbands back oh God to our husbands hearts back to their wives oh God I know you will turn the hearts of the wives back to husbands oh God I know there is restoration taking place in our marriages oh God I know there is peace being returned Returned, oh God, there is joy returning, there is love returning, there is excitement returning, oh God, like it used to be before the enemy came in. Oh God, let there be a restoration. And I stand once again, oh God. Lifting up marriages that are trusting you for the fruit of the womb, let the wombs be open. Marriages that are trusting you for job openings, and let the jobs be released. Marriages that are trusting you. Oh, there is a couple who might be facing a legal that situation, I don't know, but I just saw it. Father, I pray that you bring them through. The enemy has sought to use it to strain their marriage. But, oh God, fight for them. We kill the case. I don't know what it is, but we kill it in the name of Jesus Christ. Any marriage that seems to be headed for a divorce, in the name of Jesus, we block the angel of divorce. We bind the demon of divorce. And we send in angels of restoration. Oh, we breathe life into that marriage that looks like it is dying. We breathe life, we breathe resuscitation, we breathe restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. No married connector to this broadcast will die. No married connector to this broadcast will end in frustration and futility. Oh God, arise, arise on behalf of your sons. Arise on behalf of your debtors. Release wisdom, release strength, release grace, oh God. Cause us to know you, cause us to know you. And Lord, in our knowledge of you, let it overflow into our marriages. You created it for us to enjoy. Let us enjoy. I pray for any brother, any sister, trusting you for a good husband, trusting you for a good wife. Lord, lead them. Guide their steps, oh God. Guide their steps. Uh. Guide their steps, oh God, to a place of rest. Uh. For the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in great pastures. He leadeth us beside the still waters. Do it, oh God. Let your name be glorified. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Any other need, oh God, that your people have, I lift them up to you, Lord. Any other need, financial need, health situations. Lord, let your spirit be released. Let your power be released. Touch your people. Let there be a restoration. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Beloved, if you've been listening to this and you are not born again, you are not saved, uh, I, I want you to give your life to Jesus because that is the only way to have the fullness of life. He says that I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You are not born again. Give your life to Jesus. How do you do it? Simple. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for loving me. 
and coming to die for me. I receive your gift of salvation. Forgive me of all my sins. Receive me as yours, as yours. Write my name in the book of life. Make me your own. Thank you. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you are born again. I pray that the Lord will sustain. Stain you and uphold you until the day we meet face to face. Now, find a good Bible-believing church around where you are. Go and report yourself to the pastor. Tomorrow is Sunday. Go to church. Report yourself to the pastor. Say, you got born again on Facebook yesterday. You've come for him to disciple you. He will help you, teach you, baptize you, minister Holy Ghost baptism to you, and then you will become a full Christian Buy a Bible, read it every day, pray every day. It will help you, it will build you up. Now, if you live in Southeast London, England, you can come to our church, Shine Ministries. We meet in the Bexley Heath Academy. Pastor Sally says she's already put the address up there. So why don't you fellowship with us? Tomorrow, actually, tomorrow is a special day for us in our church. Tomorrow is our sixth anniversary. Sixth church anniversary. Since I came to full-time ministry, our church was inaugurated. Sixth anniversary. So it's we are celebrating it with my spiritual father who inaugurated me into ministry, Bishop uh, Eric in Turin, Cancer. 10 a.m. sharp. It will be a good thing if you live in london you can just come and support us in this uh, our anniversary don't let anything keep you back and uh, if you don't have a good bible believing church where you'll be built up in christ you are more than invited to be part of our spiritual family we meet sundays 10 a.m wednesday 7 p.m bible studies uh, friday 7 p.m prayer and miracle service your life will never be the same don't be left out when you can be part of the family god bless you god bless you tomorrow make sure you go to church if you already have a church stand with your pastor don't listen to dissenting voices in the church be a faithful loyal church member stand with your pastor no matter what you hear no matter what you see love your pastor cherish your pastor because god has appointed him to pray for you and to teach you god's word don't join evil people against your pastor love him be a loyal faithful church member god will bless you for it even when nobody sees it so till we come your way again go and love your husband go and love your wife go and be a christian not a wounded widow or a wounded widower be a lovely christian husband be a lovely christian wife not for your husband's sake not for your wife's sake but for your own sake and for christ's sake god bless you till we come your way again keep loving keep living for christ keep making jesus known be blessed shalom thank you so much for Sally. it's been a marathon but you stayed with me so thank you i appreciate you god bless you bye bye, bye. we'll see you next week bye don't forget to share if you haven't shared it.